just go ahead, just lift up your hands, lift up your voice and just talk to the Lord. Can we still go ahead in the spirit of that song? Go ahead and bask in His glory. Yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, in his glory. Purge out everything that is not of God. Lift up your voice and just pray. Hey. So let a fire from your altar purge my body. Let the fire from your presence purge my body. Oh, speak from the heavens and the earth will hear. Oh, speak from your throne and my ears will hear my altar is calling you oh God my sacrifice is calling you can we just turn that into a prayer you came you came here desperate hungry for another touch a divine touch upon your life, upon your walk with God. Lift up your voice and just pray. Someone is praying tonight. Someone is praying tonight. Shela bara kaba kote ke baria takast, hera kaba shata kavaran takabaria tai, hela bara kaba kashi la baria takaba koste, raka baka takabara kaba la kabaria takai. Can we just spend the next two minutes and just pray in the Holy Ghost? Someone is praying tonight. Shila paraste kabaria takai. Hera kapada balata kabaria da kabasha takabakote. Hambrasta kabarata kabaka. It says, and I will show you great and mighty things that your eyes have not seen. Your Christian work has not experienced. Call upon me and I will answer. He's not called the seed of Jacob to seek him in vain. You came here desperate tonight. You came here hungry tonight. Lift up your voice and call on the God of all flesh. Please go ahead and pray one more minute. Go ahead and enjoy his glory. Enjoy his presence. The fire of God is present. The power of God is present, even in our midst tonight. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah to the Lord. 
Exodus chapter 6 and verses 3. Exodus chapter 6 and verses 3. Scripture says, this was the Lord speaking to Moses. Can we back off a bit? Can we start from chapter 2? Or oh, sorry, verses 2. It says, and God spake unto Moses and said unto him, I am the Lord. Verse 3. It says, and I appeared unto Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name. God Almighty. It says, but by my name, Jehovah, was I not known to them. Hallelujah. So that means if our entire theology and knowledge of God is only stemming from our revelation of God captured by Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, then our revelation of God will be limited and lopsided. This scripture reveals to us three things. Number one, God is multidimensional and also infinite in his possibilities. That means what God revealed to us in the previous Koinonia service is not what God is about to show to someone tonight. So if you saw God as the all-powerful God in the previous Koinonia service, then prepare your heart for another revelation of God that has been a full time alien to us. He says that I appeared unto Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob by my name, God Almighty. But there is yet another dimension of myself called Jehovah that I have not shown yet. And the Bible says, call unto me and I will answer you. Then I will show you great and mighty things that you know not of. You may have seen the God that lived. You watch out in tonight's service. The God who heals. The God who delivers. We're going to lift up our voices in 30 seconds and pray. And say, Lord, what was I supposed to see in the previous Koinonia service that my eyes did not see? Cause my eyes to be open tonight. Lift up your voice and cry. Maybe I was supposed to see the God who lived in the previous Koinonia service, but because of distractions, I was carnal. My heart was not very receptive. God, by your mercy, you have given me another opportunity. Let the dimension you desire to show me tonight not pass me by. You have seen the God Almighty. Now watch out for the God Jehovah. Lord, reveal yourself to us tonight. And let the name of the Lord be praised. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. One more time, can we celebrate God, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Come on, you don't look like you're excited. The psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord inside and outside those in all the overflows don't be left out come on go ahead and make a joyful noise unto the Lord hallelujah so you are connected from anywhere around the world you're here on site God is about to do a new thing in our hearts so I have the honor to welcome each and every one of us 
on behalf of Jesus, who is the head of the church, and God's servant, the angel over this house, Apostle Joshua Selman, as I would always do, please walk up to five people and tell them, this is Koinonia, you're welcome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we celebrate each other as we have our seats? Just celebrate your neighbor. You can pay them a compliment. You look amazing. I love your suit. I love your dress. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we happy to be in God's house tonight? Amen. I welcome each and every one of us on behalf of Jesus, the head over this commission, and of course, on behalf of Apostle Joshua Selman, and the leadership of this ministry, we welcome each and every one of you. Welcome to Koinonia. Can you say welcome to your neighbor again? Welcome to Koinonia. That neighbor you have ignored, say welcome. Turn. Say welcome to Koinonia. You're welcome to Koinonia. Praise the Lord. Psalms 25 verse 14, I'll read it to us. It says, the secret of the Lord is with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Hallelujah. Our Father is no news as he continues to teach us in the body of Christ that there are certain mysteries, there are certain secrets that can be accessed because in this kingdom there are compendium of mysteries and the scriptures tells us that the number one key here is that you should fear him. He it says it's with them that fear him and he will show them his covenant. Hallelujah. There are many of us that have come from different parts of the world here tonight. For some of us have flown outside of Nigeria, coming from different nations. For some outside of Abuja, we recognize you. We want to welcome you specially to these grounds tonight. This is Koinonia. The Bible says, come unto me, all ye that are heavily laden. All ye that labor and are heavily laden, and I shall give you rest. Hallelujah. Many of us have come with diverse kinds of reasons for some of us coming to seek breakthrough, for some of us coming to seek the God of our covenant. He says, we are that generation that seeks your face, that seeks your face, O Jacob. So if it is your very first time on these grounds here, if it is your very first time here at Koinonia, can you rise to your feet as we celebrate you? Koinonia, let's give them a warm welcome. This is a house of love. There are so many people visiting tonight. Wherever you are, the basement, the overflows outside, the alls, all one, all two, wherever you are connecting with us from, under the sound of our voice as a ministry, you are connecting online, you are part of the service. It is no, it's not a coincidence that you are con connecting with us right now. As we all know, there is no coincidence in the adventure of every believer. It is not a coincidence that you are listening to us right now. You might have stumbled on this broadcast by mistake, whatever you want to call it. But just know that tonight is your night of visitation in the name of Jesus. Our online media will be welcoming you right about now. Just comment. I'm a first-timer. Followers, kindly welcome them. Also, our online media will welcome you especially. But if you're on these grounds tonight, we love you. Thank you for joining us in service tonight. And it's our prayer that the Lord, our God, shall visit you at the point of your needs. In the name of Jesus, you have come this far. The Lord will not let you go back the same way you have come. That situation that has driven or that drove you to this place. In the name of God, our Lord and Savior, He shall meet you at your point of expectation and needs in the name of Jesus. Right about now, a team of our PR officials will be putting into your hands a card to welcome Patrick package containing vital information about this ministry please take it in from them and fill every information as requested here legibly on the flip side is a column for prayer request we have a system to collect prayer requests and to pray for you please fill it in legibly as you fill it in once you are done please pass it to the worker standing right beside you and the lord will bless you in jesus name just before you have your seat we have a prayer for you koinonia can we stretch forth our hands and pray for them. It never tires us to pray for these ones. 
The Lord has brought you to this place in the name of Jesus. Your story will change like day and night in the name of Jesus. You will carry fire for your altar. In the name of Jesus, you will be brought into newer dimensions of the Spirit. Newer wells will be dug tonight and you will drink from it tonight in the name of Jesus. Everything you have been trusting God for, you will testify upon this altar tonight in the name of Jesus. The Lord shall bless you and give you favor. Favor with men and favor with God in the name of Jesus. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Koinonia, let's celebrate them as they have their seats. You are welcome to Koinonia. Hallelujah. In my life, Lord, I see what you're doing one more time, Lord. I lift my hands in praise of your name. I lift my hands in praise. Is it all right if we take a few seconds and acknowledge the faithfulness of God? In my life, Lord, I see what you're doing. And one more time, Lord, I lift my hands in praise of your name. I lift my Can we acknowledge his faithfulness? That his word produces results in our life. Every week we're exposed to mysteries of the kingdom. We're exposed to keys of victory. Can someone just say, Lord, thank you for what you are doing in my life. We thank you for the things around us, but we also thank you for the transformation. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. The Bible reveals that the Word can become flesh. That the Word can enter into the realm of tangibility. That the words you read in the scripture, the words that you hear spoken, they can become flesh. And testimonies reveal Jesus. Testimonies are one very powerful and effective way to reveal that Jesus is all that he says that he is. With every testimony, there are human beings, brothers and sisters that are receiving the words that have been spoken, the words that have been written, and they have seen the manifestation. It is the assignment of the Spirit of God through our diligence to listening and being submitted under the teachings that the word becomes flesh. Can you just say the word is becoming flesh in my life? That if you see a scripture that says, and God can cause all grace to abound, it should not just be a scripture that you hear and you say, wow, such an encouraging teaching. The essence is that the word should become flesh. You know, unbelievers would not be able to see Jesus until they see him in our lives. They are encouraged to believe that Jesus is all you say he is when they can see him manifest in your life. Can you say one more time that the word is becoming flesh in my life? Hallelujah. Are we ready to receive the testimonies of what God is doing in and through this ministry? You're about to receive testimonies that say the word has become flesh. That Jesus spoke truth in the Bible. And beyond words, they have become testimonies. Let's make welcome the following people that will be sharing with us here physically. Let's welcome Philip Levi. Philip Levi. Let's welcome Godwin Samson. Godwin Samson, let's welcome Peter's favor. Peter's favor. And finally, Adelike 
Adetunde, Adeleke, Adetunde. Hallelujah. Now, please, with all your attention, with all your focus, listen to the testimonies I'm about to read to you of what God is doing in and through this ministry around the world. Realize that the God who made every testimony you're about to hear possible is available tonight with his grace, with his power, with his love, and he's committed to producing the same results in your life. Can I hear a loud amen? First testimony I would be reading is from Abidemi. And it says, a few months ago, my brother was told he had renal cancer and that it might have metast metastasized, forgive me, metastasized, which means the development of secondary malignant growths at a distance from the primary site of the cancer. It was shocking news to us. that things would happen before August 25th. That is what they're referring to. And it says, we went for a repeat scan and everything was said to be normal. Can someone celebrate Jesus? Both kidneys were healthy and no metastasis. And no metastasis. This testimony is long overdue, and I thank the Almighty God for the miraculous healing He performed in my family. Is this how we celebrate the healing power of Jesus? Cancer supernaturally disappears. That my life and that of my family have turned around dramatically for good ever since we became students in the school of the Spirit under our mentor, Apostle Joshua Selman. I have lots of testimonies to share, but I will only share the one that happened recently. In America, it is almost impossible to buy a home or build one without taking a loan with interest rates that increase the debt and prolong the payment terms endlessly. Many American believers, um, she says, abort God's call due to so many bills to pay and work just to pay those bills after the pandemic after the pandemic home and land prices skyrocketed mandating a loan to buy or build a home due to our conviction to do everything the kingdom way my husband and i decided to wait on the lord for financial resources needed to build our home without taking a loan but the more we waited the more this conviction became a far-fetched dream all known persons took out loans and bought their, their homes during the pandemic as the mortgage industry made it easier for people to qualify then. Compromising thoughts constantly came to my mind as our children heartbreakingly complained of unfulfilled declarations every year. You can imagine that kind of thing. And we still lived at the same rented place. The Lord started impressing upon my heart to look for a location with schools that are excelling academically and buy land there so our children can attend good schools. This idea was strange to me because their current school's academic performance was satisfactory and improving every year. Nevertheless, we obeyed. Some prestigious neighbors, neighborhood land prices, I beg your pardon, were almost $1 million dollars. The piece of land I found was not on sale, but I asked my realtor to inquire about it for us, and the seller said they weren't ready to sell it unless we wanted to buy it for over $200,000. That land was zoned to excellent performing schools and was close to our work, church, and favorite grocery stores and shopping centers. We came home and prayed about that land, and that night I had a prophetic dream about the land confirming God's will. Getting the land in the dream was easy, but when we tried to actually pursue the land after the dream, everything stood still, and the owners rejected our price offer several times and stopped communicating with us. Our realtor sent numerous messages to the seller's realtor about the status of our offer, but they were unbending, citing better and preferred offers on the land. 
we started this land pursuit in January 2023 and things prolonged till I heard another testimony about this grace called favor in September and knew that we were bankrupt of and needed that grace to obtain the land as Psalm 44 verse 3 reveals. My husband and I embarked on a spiritual journey for this grace called favor and for seven days we played and prayed and received impartations from our Father and the Lord, Apostle Joshua Selman, as we listened to the message. After the seven days prayers, I was led by the Holy Spirit to send a text message to the seller's realtor to find out why they had not responded to our offer since our realtor said they were unresponsive. To mine and our realtor's surprise, she responded and apologized, saying she had COVID and was in the hospital. I messaged prayers and God's blessings to her and also asking her to inquire from her client and let us know where we stand as per the land. Our realtor called us the next day and told us that the seller had miraculously accepted our offer. Can we celebrate Jesus? We were thrilled and knew that we shifted this through prayer and through the impartations of this grace called favor. We finally closed on the land and the realtor told us that all the people who made higher offers on the land had issues with their finances when it was time to pay the down payment and as a result, it opened the door for us to buy. All glory to God for his faithfulness. We love Apostle and our Koinonia family. Can we celebrate Jesus for what he has done in the life of this beautiful family. Can you shout this grace called favor? Say it one more time. This grace called favor. It speaks in my life. Hallelujah. I love this testimony because it's about land. The Bible says um, that the earth, the profit of the earth is to all. That means there's a portion for every one of us. Can you say I receive my own? If you said it with faith, it is yours in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. So we will be awaiting your testimony. The next testimony I'll be reading, the final testimony I have before me, is from Mrs. Jane O. I had prayed for an opportunity to leave the country and also to get a job that would sponsor this as we did not have enough money to relocate as a family. In early June, I got a job link from a colleague who had left the country. I applied and I was scheduled for an interview almost immediately. I applied in June. By July, my visa was out and early September, I had traveled. Can we celebrate Jesus? <laughs> Hallelujah. Mrs. Jane says, as I write this, I have already stayed a month abroad working in my dream job with a package that is seven times what I was used to. Seven times. Listen to what she says. I had a six digit job in Nigeria. So you can imagine seven times that. This job relocated my entire family free of charge plus other benefits. God did this one. I like that statement. Can we celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. You know, sometimes your different uh, members in your family can have different prayer requests. And in this testimony, one door opened that answered all the prayer requests. Everyone was into that same experience. Can you say, I receive? I receive. There's a door that would open that would wipe the tears of your entire family in Jesus' name. And as you listen to me, that word, that rema word that brings a strategy and brings the wisdom necessary for it, let it come to you tonight in Jesus' name. Can we just celebrate Jesus one more time as we receive every testimony that is going to be shared here? You're welcome right to the point, your name and what the Lord has done. Good evening, church. My name is Philip Levi. Um, in 2018, I encountered daddy's message on YouTube and um, it was a five minute message. I listened to it and after listening to the message, at that point, I decided I was gonna be very serious with my spiritual life and from that point, I became very serious. In October of 2018, I went for a medical checkup and they said I had malaria, which they gave me drugs for, for, 
from that October 2018 down to 2023, this year, I had to treat malaria every month. Last year, it got really bad and was a very serious issue of concern because from one month, it dropped to two, two weeks. This is something that I would literally go for a medical checkup and they would give me drugs. The next two weeks, I'm back at that same place and they would tell me they would give me a stronger drugs, but nothing was working. April 2023, Miracle Service, I came to church. Daddy charged our hearts to believe God. And truly, my faith was stirred. And um, it came to my mind to bring that case before God again. And I did. But um, that month, nothing really happened. I still felt sick. Fast forward to June. Fast forward to June. Um, um, the, the Sunday before the next Sunday that will be, that is birthday and the Miracle Service. I came to church, I went to the medical stand, and after explaining everything to the lady, the lady said this might be more than malaria, that she's gonna write a series of tests, and she referred that I go to Medicaid yard with Taco to do the test. I did all the tests that she asked me to do, and the results came out that I was okay. The only thing I had was malaria. It was a very serious issue of concern. She recommended some strong drugs according to her that I took, and nothing happened. I felt more sick each time I took the drugs, on Saturday, which um, the next day will be Sunday, that is birthday, I came to church, um, I felt some strength and was happy that at least I could make it to church, which was the miracle service. Um, I came to church that day strongly believing God that something had to happen in my life that day because this not interrupted my life and my work. It wasn't, you know, and I believed God and um, after the whole service, I wasn't sure if anything had happened, but I knew I believed God. I had to wait to check and see, because it's malaria, you have to wait to see, you know. And I waited, it was 25th, so I always remembered. 25th of the next month, I waited, nothing happened. Um, I was absolutely fine. <laughs> Counting 25th of every single month. I didn't really realize what had happened. I came to church last week, I went to the medical stand. I've been feeling some headache within the week. And immediately I approached the medical stand and I told the lady that this is what I was feeling. And as if the lady knew what was in my mind, she said, just because you're feeling these symptoms doesn't necessarily mean you have malaria. Let's do a test. So we did the test and for the first time in over four years, she confirmed that I did not have malaria. The joy of freedom broke in my heart. This is four months for the first time in over five years, over four years, I have not had to treat malaria. I have come to give all glory to God. What Hallelujah. God Can we join our brother and celebrate Jesus? Cycles of sickness, patterns of sickness broken in the name of Jesus. Can we agree that the last time you felt that pain will be the last time? In Jesus' name. Go ahead, sir. Your name and what the Lord has done. All right. Good evening, Cornelia. My name is Godwin Samson. I have been trusting God for these grants that we applied with my uncle since 2020. And on Wednesday, I had a leadership to, to sow a seed, which I did this morning around 9.48 a.m. My uncle called me that he has received an alert of over eight digits this morning. I just come to give God thanks and praise. Can we celebrate Jesus? Long-awaited grant has come, and it is to the glory of Jesus. You can come, please. Your name and what the Lord has done, ma'am. Good evening, Koinonian. My name is Peter's Favor. It's my first time giving testimony. And it will surely not be your last in Jesus' name. Amen. I'm one of the new members of Koinonia, and the first day I was in church, Apostle was ministering and declaring that that job, you will get it in two weeks. I've been applying for federal jobs, and the two places I submitted my CVs, my friends got theirs, they called them, they started going to work three months before I was called. That was after I left Koinonia that day. I had a dream that Apostle gave me gold in the dream, and two weeks later, I was called to come and pick up my appointment from both federal offices. So, I, I was crying, I was shaking, so I had to pick the federal job, the one I preferred to the other one. And I went to the office, did my documentation and everything. And my second testimony is I had a shop, business was bad, 
Business people know what it feels to have a shop, investing money and not making sales is so depressing. So after the encounter, I had my oil, I sprinkled and everything. Since then, I've been making massive sales to the glory of God. Thank you, Jesus. Can we celebrate Jesus for his faithfulness? The Bible says that he shall increase our greatness and comfort us on all sides. Can we agree that after tonight, your phone would receive your own congratulatory messages? In Jesus' name. Go ahead, say your name and what the Lord has done. Praise the Lord. My name is Adeleke Adetuji. I'm here this evening to celebrate the name of the Lord. Um, some four years ago, I took a career decision that um, affected me. Um, for over a year, I was, a, I was at home without a job. So I had to join my wife in, in, in a factory. Um, we were working together. It was, it was a difficult moment, very, very difficult one. Um, we had a, a young man in the factory at that time. He was always listening to messages, songs. And, you know, the messages were different. I was, so on a particular day, I walked up to him and said, who is this preacher? And he told me, Apostle Joshua Selman. I told him to send me some messages. He sent me about 20 messages that day. And to be honest with you, it was a new journey from that point. I listened to messages such as... And from that moment, there was a transformation in my life. My Christian work was different. Few months down the line, I, jo I got a job um, as a national sales manager to launch a new brand in the country. One year, one year down the line, the project was very successful. I got another job as a commercial director with another organization in less than one and a half years. There's a message we always make reference to in this house, this grace called favor. I noticed that there were a couple of testimonies that kept coming. People got jobs that paid them in dollars and it was multiple of what they were earning. I tapped into that grace. Brethren, I am here this evening to testify to the goodness of God that I have joined that category of people as well. And I'm so grateful to God because you can only imagine that feeling when you look at your tithes. And you know it's more than what some people you started together I have not even been able to end. I have returned to celebrate. Hallelujah. Can we join him and celebrate the faithfulness? Now as one grateful house, can we truly celebrate Jesus for every one of the testimonies you have just heard? Celebrate Jesus. Come on, he deserves a louder shout than that. Can we shout a shout of the victorious ones? The Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. We do not give any room for any doubt and unbelief in this place. Let the atmosphere be filled with faith. Now in a few seconds, let's bow our heads and everyone give him thanks for your life, for that which you have seen him do, and even for that which you know he will do. Give him thanks from the depth of your heart. Give him thanks for his faithfulness. Give him thanks for his mercy. <sighs> mercy is new every morning. Can we celebrate him with gratitude in your heart? Acknowledge him that if he says it, he is committed. That word that has left his lips cannot return to him void. It must accomplish its assignment in your life. Give him thanks already. Lord, I trust you. In spite of the pain I currently feel, I know it is temporary, so I thank you. I cried yesterday, but I'm alive today. Thank you. Are you blessing the Lord tonight? Are you magnifying him tonight with your words? The Bible says, come with words. 
Get intentional tonight. Magnify him from the depths of your heart. We've heard of mighty things and mighty deeds of our God tonight. And all things work together for our good. We give you thanks. We give you praise. For by faith we know your grace will see us through. We give you thanks, we give you praise, for we know that all things work together for our good. We give you thanks, we give you praise, for by faith we know your grace will see us through. Father, we bless your name tonight. Our hearts are filled with gratitude. We hallow your name. Your word says, Oh, that men will give thanks and praise the Lord for his goodness and for all his wonderful works to the children of men. He has broken the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. Tonight, as a body of believers, we shout and celebrate your faithfulness. Kononia, can you celebrate the Almighty God tonight? Can you make it louder? Give the Lord a loud shout of praise. Tell your neighbor, we serve a mighty God. Say it convincingly, we serve a mighty God. Can you tell them you are next in line for your own testimony? One more time, put your hands together and give the Lord a loud celebration. Jesus is a miracle worker. And we have come with a heart of gratitude tonight again to worship him in giving. Don't forget, worship is demonstrated through the songs we sing, through the life we lead. When we submit our lives to his will, it's a worship to him. And worship is also demonstrated through our givings, the payment of our tithes, giving of offerings. If you are paying your tithes tonight, I'd like to invite you to please make your way forward. Please make your way forward if you are paying your tithes tonight. I'd like to invite you to make your way forward. The Bible says, bring all tithes into my storehouse and prove me now in this, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that you will not have enough room to contain it. That's in Malachi 3 verse 10. Bring all tithes into the storehouse and prove me now in this, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, you will not even have enough room to contain it. If you are in any of the overflows, please make your way to the front of the LED screen. And if you are joining us online, the account details of the ministry will be displayed on the page of your device. If you want to pay by way of transfer, the account details are the Guaranteed Trust Bank account of Eternity Network International. And if you're in the auditorium here, please, you can also make use of the envelopes that are on your seats. The envelopes also contain the account details to properly enclose your seats, your tithes, your prophetic offerings, and also other kinds of offerings with which you are honoring the Lord tonight. Please do not forget there are also other ways you can give and worship God. The USSD codes, the squad, and several other platforms. Lastly, you can also leverage on the point of sale systems. The ushers are all around. You can beckon on one of them to bring the officials that are handling the point of sale terminals so you can use your ATM cards to give and worship God tonight. If you're already standing in front, can you begin to talk to the Lord? Begin to talk to the Lord tonight. The Word of God says, bring all tithes and offerings into my storehouse and prove me in this if I will not open the windows of heaven. God already made his commitment. He says to prove him in this, that he will open the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing that we will not have enough room to contain those blessings. It means your bills will be paid, your needs will be met. God will show up for you in addition to the fact that you are advancing the kingdom with your giving. 
Can we just bow our heads tonight briefly as we speak a word of prayer? Our Father and our God, we bless your name. We thank you and we are very grateful. Thank you for the testimonies of your faithfulness and of your intervention. We thank you for testimonies from all around the world of you confirming the words of your servant and performing the counsel of your messenger. Lord, we are grateful. And as a body of believers, once again, we shout and we say, thank you, Jesus. Lord, as we give tonight, we ask that these seeds will bruise the head of every devourer in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that the devourer is rebuked for our sake in the name of Jesus. Lord, we declare that as we give, these givings will cause an advancement and establishment of your kingdom, even in our territories, in the name of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we also declare that these seeds will cause multiplication to come back to us in our finances, resources, and every aspect of our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. We declare that our bills are paid, our needs are met, we experience supernatural supplies in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your holy name. In Jesus' matchless name we have prayed. Amen. Please go ahead, pay your tithes, give your offerings, and also sow your seeds. God bless you.
let's give Jesus a big hand clap glory to Jesus welcome to church this is the presence of God the house of God where we are changed and we are transformed I want us to take the next 10 minutes to pray in the spirit um, and build capacity this is one of the ways that we build strength and stamina so for the next 10 minutes undivided attention looking unto Jesus with your heart enlarged I like you to cry praying in the spirit from the depth of your heart pray in the spirit you can hold hands with someone if you want to draw that support but make sure you are praying discipline yourself to pray lord we bless you lord we bless you lord we bless you lord we bless you lord, we bless you Sate balaka para kata fras kabalaka para to kapara da balaka pas Kaberia saprande balaku sapre de balanda kaparias Embreke para ko sapra di kebeleko saprande balatu ziata Majesty we bless you All the overflows make sure you are praying those connecting by way of the internet join us as we pray edify our spirit man Shalibara sobranda balaka sabra de gebelekata Shate baraka fasada balakata branda gada balakus Embrete parakus kalibre de gabalakus sebrash Shkate brende gebaruski abalakus sabrest Embratus ke labrati ke priada balas Sobrega de baruntas ke brande greti sabalakusi Embratos calibre de cria paruski abalanda Shade balekos cada brande ke balakos Sabrati ka barado sabrati ka balaka parada ke vest Kranta parakos ka brade ka balaka parusia ta Sade balada bakata frande balaka proska bolosh Embrata ke paraka ta frata ke balaka ta frande balakos Go ahead and pray. Edify your spirit, man. Majesty. Embarekete faras kasaza balakata branda kelakata fratsa kele barakato sabregebes krate kavala sada branda kele parusiata. But he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself, edifieth himself, edifieth himself. Shade salaga baranda skabarako shabrede kebelekos. Kali baranta fraska beleka parusa siya da balanda. Ikrete ke baraka sobrende beleka parusia tapas. Are you praying? Ha baranta fraska barako shabre ke parados ke lebrende beleka. Shebre de baratos ko brende barako sabrende beleko siya ta. Habara so prende ke beleko A few more minutes. Go ahead and pray. Fix your eyes on Jesus. See him lifting you while you pray. See him rewriting your story while you pray. See him giving you ascendance in the spirit while you pray. Alabrenda gabara kosa vraska belaga baratu zabrendesh 
Ebrata kafaraku sabra de belenda proske beleku siata. Ebra sobaranda vraska barakata bradega de belekatos. A few more minutes, you are praying. You are sowing in the spirit, investing in your spirit, man. The Bible says, He that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption, but he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting. Can you stretch for two more minutes? Alembarato sabrende gebele kafarasko da brende gebaraku shadas. Rate gabarate fraski malato shabrende gebele kuparas. Ay 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 ay, glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Prophesy, hi, 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 glory be to God. Hi, 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 glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, say Hallelujah, hallelujah Hallelujah, hallelujah, say Hallelujah, hallelujah Hi, hi, hi Sopra da gabala cosaria da bala tosa Shabranda prakata prakata para cosia da ba Glory Turn that song to a prayer Say chant in the spirit you are glorifying his name the Bible says glorify the Lord with your body which is the Lord's. We give you praise. Halal Yeshua, we bless you. We extol your name because you are King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. Tonight is a prayer meeting and it is also an impartation service. You are going to cry to the Lord from the depth of your heart. That which must rest upon my destiny for my advancement, for my ascendance, I receive by faith. I prepare my spirit. Go ahead and pray that you will not miss out on what is coming from heaven to change lives, to transform you, to take you to another dimension in the spirit. Are you praying? Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 glory be to God. Pray. Ay, 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 glory be to God. 
Hallelujah, hallelujah, glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Spirit of the living God, we have come tonight to receive. We have come tonight to be changed. We have come tonight to be imparted by your spirit. Our hearts are open. Give us strange encounters. Give us visitations tonight. Let your word come alive. Position us for higher dimensions in the spirit. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. Please be seated. Be very sensitive with your heart opened. And I pray in the name of Jesus that you will not miss out on that which God will be releasing tonight. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every time God wants to grant us access to higher and weightier levels of the anointing and of his spirit. He will lead you to the house of God where you will receive graces. You will you will find access to very superior levels of spiritual power in the name of Jesus Christ. What I'm about to teach you before we pray and receive, if you understand the key, there is a gift that God wants to give us tonight, truly. Hallelujah. What you are going to be learning tonight will be the key to understanding the next phase of your prophetic destiny in Christ, what you are about to learn tonight will be the key to downloading mysteries from the realm of the spirit. That your life will be an unending wonder if you understand this mystery. Father, please help us in the name of Jesus Christ. Um, really, it's a charge tonight, but then I'm praying sincerely from the depth of my heart. I took out time to pray over this teaching when the Lord brought it to my heart. And it's my prayer that God himself will enlarge your heart to be able to receive this. You cannot survive in the days that are ahead of us without an understanding of this mystery. Tonight I'm teaching on the seeing eyes. I'm showing you how to access the gift of sight. Hmm. The seeing eyes. Matthew 13, 13, please. I want to show you a mystery in the spirit tonight and we'll pray. How to access the gift of sight. Therefore, speak I to them in parables because they seeing, see not. And hearing, they hear not. Neither do they understand. Reading to 16. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which said, By hearing shall ye hear, and shall not understand. And seeing ye shall see, and shall not perceive. For these people's heart is waxed gross, and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest at any time they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears and should understand with their heart and should be converted and I should heal them. Read verse 16 if you're a believer. Ready? One to read. But blessed are your eyes for they see and your ears. Help us again, Spirit of the living God. In the name of Jesus, the Son of of the living God. It is important for the saints to know how to tap into the wisdom of God that has been ordained for our glory. I've been meditating on 1 Corinthians chapter 2 beginning from verse 6 to 12. This is a scripture that I have taken time to dwell in because the Bible lets us know that we have been created unto good works and that glory, the glory of God should emanate from the life 
of every believer. Am I doing something wrong? Sound people, you may need to help me. The feedbacks are noisy. Please help me on that. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. And so it is important by the Spirit of the living God that we understand how the believer is ordained to tap into the wisdom of God. The Bible says, how be it, follow carefully now, we speak wisdom among them that are mature, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. Seven, but we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Verse 9, it says, But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God had prepared for them that love him. 10, but God had revealed them. Hallelujah. Inasmuch as no eye has seen, in as much as no ear has heard, the Bible says we stand a chance to receive access to those things. God had revealed them to us by his spirit. For the spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God. The final verse now. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world, but the Spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So the Bible tells us that the saints have been ordained unto a life of glory, a life of grace, repeatedly you find in scripture that the believer has been given a high calling in Christ and that our Christian experience is such that should capture and reveal the glory of God. I've said it once and again in Koinonia here that the end of our journey, the end of our walk with God is glory. That when God begins to walk with a man, in a man and through a man, the end of it, ladies and gentlemen, is glory. The manifestation of his power, his grace, and all the dimensions that are captured in God. But many believers do not know how to tap into the wisdom of God and then to make that wisdom revealed. And tonight's teaching seeks to provide a guide to help you to have the seeing eye, capacity to receive the gift of sight. Among the many miracles that Jesus performed in the Bible was the miracle of opening of blind eyes. And there were times in scripture where certain people could not receive or Jesus would come and find a group of people in other renditions, he would say he healed them all. And then in other renditions, you will hear that he healed some. But there is no record in scripture of any case of blindness that Jesus did not heal. It was a prophetic message that when a man is bankrupt of sight, you are limited in life and you are limited in destiny. Hallelujah. And very quickly, I want to show you by the Spirit how men can tap into the gift of sight and redirect their lives. The absence of the gift of sight will keep you stunted will keep you limited you may never able to activate destiny and to be a blessing many believers are blind in as much as they are saved they do not know how to tap into the intelligence of the spirit and so there is nothing commendable about their christian experience they just go to church they study the bible blindly they pray blindly and there is no beauty and glory that emanates with time from their lives The seeing eyes. A man can have access to the miracle of sight. Now, very quickly, the seeing eye is an attempt to show you the various ways. Watch this now. 
that the intent, the mind of God, the mind of the spirit is brought to bear to the believer. That there is a technology in the spirit by which you can tap into the mind of God pictorially, graphically, that you can know that this is God's intent for you for the now and for the season of your life that you're in and then you obtain grace to walk based on that picture hallelujah now if you do not know what god is thinking about you in fact the bible says it this way jeremiah 29 and verse 11 for i know the thoughts that i think towards you said the lord that they are thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. He does not tell you specifically what they are. He just tells you that they are thoughts of peace. And so you need to buy into the mind of the spirit to know what God intends for you to do now. There are many sincere believers who have found themselves touring parts of destiny that were not marked. It is not part of their prophetic blueprint. They sincerely began to follow blindly. And from the lens of prophecy and God's God's assignment for them, many of them would soon realize that they've just been wasting their time doing things that are not part of their prophetic blueprint, taking journeys and long paths in life and destiny that they would later find out was not earmarked for them. For as long as John was in the will of God, he had access to all that God intended for him to do. No one could kill him. No one could, people could persecute him, but he became invincible. He was immune because he was staying in the will of God. The moment John the Baptist veered off the will of God and he began to do and practice things that were not in his prophetic blueprint, he became a prey to the enemy and he died cheaply. The assignment of John was to be the forerunner of Jesus. And for as long as he understood that assignment and stood upon his watch playing that role effectively, the same people who would later kill him were there and yet they had no power over him because he was immune by the power of his vision. But the moment he announced Jesus and he did not know what else to do with his life, he began to delve into areas, perhaps sincerely so, that was not a mark for his destiny. How could a man announce Jesus and die the way John died? How could a man ordain Jesus to ministry and die the way that he died? That is not how God rewards those who walk with him. But that is what happens to a man when you become blinded. Just because you saw yesterday does not mean you are seeing now. You must receive the miracle of sight for the now. There are people who begin with God accurately receiving the blueprint for their destinies. But eventually they allow blindness to plague them. And with that blindness will come confusion. This is true for those in ministry. This is true for those in business. This is true for family people. And so they start well excelling in life and destiny. And eventually you will find them veering off paths that were not in their prophetic blueprint. Imagine with me, ladies and gentlemen, that I ask you to close your eyes and then I ask you to walk out of this room or to walk to your car to go home. Chances are excellent except by divine help, you may not get there. The probability literally that you may get to your car may almost be zero. Do you know why? Your legs are working well. The ability to move is there. The ability to think is there. The ability to reach is there. But just because one component required for your advancement went missing, your life becomes... The, the terrible thing is that it will not stagnate you. It will confuse you and derail you until you die. When your legs are tied... Even if your eyes are open, you can see where you should go, but the ability to take steps is not there. But when your legs are fine, your hands are fine, your mind is fine, but your eyes are blind, you will keep moving. Motion without direction is a risk because you can fall into a pit. Are we together now? Yeah. So many people begin well. In fact, there are people who start from day one of their spiritual journey. They already start in confusion with all shades of blindness. And they find out that they are wasting their time, wasting their energy, investing themselves in things that have no 
they have no no um, no consistency with God's blueprint for them I'm praying for someone here tonight where you have veered off in destiny that you are moving this way thinking it is God leading you at the end of tonight you will know who and what has been leading you because listen some of us the way you are going if you continue it without a message like this halting you you will definitely get into perdition sincerity is not enough to actualize destiny you must have the gift of sight there are people today who once were in God's prophetic program they once were in God's prophetic program once upon a time they were at the cutting edge of God's program but they lacked the ability to see what God is doing now and while they were relevant in one season when seasons changed they did not have the gift of sight and they continued doing what God was doing not knowing that God has switched hallelujah and the dangerous thing is that when you are a leader, if you do not have the gift of sight, people will follow you with unbending loyalty, even into confusion, even into perdition. There are parents today who have confused the destinies of their children because they lacked the gift of sight. They did not know like Manoah what kind of destiny these children would have. And they began to insist on a pathway that was not consistent with God's blueprint. And the children in obedience followed them only to discover they've wasted 30 years 40 years of their lives and their destiny hallelujah I have had the honor and the privilege of seeing people who are sincere they love God with all their heart but either as a result of poor mentorship or misunderstanding of the ways of God have found themselves veering off paths in ministry parts in business and parts in destiny it becomes more troubling when you have people following you in that confusion Jesus was rebuking the scribes and the Pharisees and he called them blind people who were leading the blind imagine with me that a blind man is leading another blind man they hold on to you believing you know where you are going but because you lack the gift of sight Hallelujah. There are many individuals who are not able to translate the things that they have seen in the spirit to find expression because number one, they do not even understand how to see in the spirit nor how to interpret the things that are seen. Do you know that almost everyone here, by the time I'm done showing you what I'm showing you, you will know that the spirit of God has been opening the blueprint of your destiny once and again. For some of you, because you did not have the gift of sight, you're not even aware that it is God showing you. And I've taught you that there is timing to destiny. Most people copy what others are doing. They do not have the gift of sight to know what God is doing. So when they find out that something is working, everybody just says, this is how ministry is being done. Let's do it that way. This is how business is being done. And then after 10 years, the person leading you will say, I'm sorry, I really did not see well. And you find out that you may have wasted your time accessing the gift of sight let me show you a very interesting story Luke chapter 18 my goodness Luke 18 from verse 35 I've read this scripture for decades of my life but as I was preparing this sermon the Lord opened my eyes to something I had never seen and it came to pass this is the story of blind Bartimeo please follow carefully that as he was come nigh unto Jericho a certain blind man sat at the way begging one of the consequences of blindness you remain limited a certain blind man with feet to walk hands to reach a mind to think but because of blindness he sat at the wayside the same way that people follow to actualize their destiny he was not in the way he sat by the side begging number two the Bible says and hearing the multitude pass by he asked what it meant hmm. next verse please quickly and they told him that Jesus of Nazareth passed by 38 
and he cried, watch this, and said, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. 39. And they which went before rebuked him that he should hold his peace. But he cried so much the more, Thou son of David, have mercy on me. Next verse. And Jesus stood and commanded him to be brought unto him. Follow carefully now. And when he was come near, he asked him, what was the question? Saying, what will thou that I do for you? The man never said, open my eyes. He said that I may receive. Hmm. There is no mention in that story of open my eyes. It was about receiving that I may receive my sight. He didn't say open my eyes because his eyes could be open. I, I doubt if his eyes was closed. Are we together? Just because your eyes are open does not mean you have received the gift of sight. His eyes were not closed, but the man was blind. So blindness is beyond your eyes being closed. Give us the scripture. Let's finish up. <laughs> and he said, Lord, 41, let's go back please. That I may receive. It's a gift that you give all men who are interested that I may receive my sight, 42. And Jesus said unto him, since you understand that sight is a gift, more than the opening of eyes, Jesus did not say your eyes be open. What did he say? Receive thy sight. Your faith has brought you this salvation called the gift of sight. Receive thy sight. Next verse. 43 and immediately he did what you notice the Bible never talks about opening of the eyes immediately he received his sight and following him glorified God and all the people when they saw it they gave thanks look at me that meant if you saw the blind man you would think he was seen because his eyes were open it was only him and his situation that showed that he was blind. Are we together now? If you saw him, you would not see his eyes closed this way because your eyes can be closed and yet you are still seeing. For instance, when the Bible tells us that Paul's eyes went closed as Saul, even though he was blind physically, the Bible says he was in the house. Remember that? He went to a city called Straight. And he waited there and he was still having visions even with a closed eyes. So that a man's eye is opened does not mean he has received the gift of sight. Jesus says, seeing you do not see. Hearing you do not hear. Mm. Hallelujah. Now there are four channels. When God gives a man the gift of sight, when God grants a man access to the seeing eye, it expresses itself in four principal channels. And I want you to please pay attention because this is the gift that God wants to give someone. You, your eyes have been open all your life, but you will be finding out that you've not been seen. He laid hands on someone who was blind and said, what do you see? He said, I see men like trees. And he laid hands on him the second time and he said, I see clearly. The opening of the eyes does not necessarily mean sight. I repeat again, you can be looking and yet not see. Your eyes are open, but you do not have sight. The request of blind Bartimaeus was not that his eyes should open. He said that I may receive my sight. There are four prophetic channels according to scripture. When God opens the eyes of a man, these are the channels that he uses to communicate his intent to that man. You can know you have received the gift of sight because these four channels will be activated immediately in your life. And it is by those channels you will be able to navigate your path through destiny. Moving from one stride, one accomplishment, one kingdom exploit to another. Are you ready? Number one, the first channel that is activated when you receive the gift of sight 
are your dreams and visions. Write it down, please. Your dreams and visions are the first channels that show whether or not you have received the gift of sight. When God gives a man the seeing eye, it tells immediately in your dreams and visions. Joel chapter 2 and verse 28. Joel 2 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. It says, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Help me read the rest. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. When a man does not have the seeing eye, you will never be able to have the platform of dreams and visions to be used by God to reveal the blueprint of your destiny for you. I hope you know that the capacity to dream dreams and to see visions is a gift from God to help direct the course of people's lives. In Job chapter 33, 14 and 15, write it please. Job 33, 14 and 15, watch this. It says, for God speaketh once, yea, twice, yet a man perceives it not. 15, in a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in the slumberings upon the bed. You know what you were saying? That every time you go to bed, while your body is sleeping, the Spirit of God is coming with messages that connect to your destiny, connects to the next level of your life. In that realm of the Spirit called the realm of dreams and visions, Satan is also interested in that realm because he can manipulate the things you see and hear. You will wake up with messages that you think are from God and obey them sincerely unto your destruction. Hallelujah. There are people today who were misdirected because of the dreams they had, misdirected because of the visions they had, and have sincerely remained loyal to those dreams and visions to their perdition. If dreams and visions were not powerful, Satan would not be interested in your sleep. That when men go to bed, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of transactions happen in the spirit. Dreams and visions. Is God helping someone? Genesis chapter 41. Give us verse 25 and then verse 28. The story of, jo of Joseph. And Joseph said unto Pharaoh, the dream that Pharaoh the dream of Pharaoh is one. Watch this. God had showed Pharaoh through that dream what he is about to do. God has shown him what? What he is about to do. Go to verse 28. He repeats it again. This is the thing which I have spoken unto Pharaoh. What God is about to do, he showed unto Pharaoh. Has God shown you what he's about to do in your life? Has God shown you what he's about to do in your family? Has God shown you what he wants to do with your destiny? Has God shown you what he wants to do with your ministry? Have you been wasting the six or eight hours that when your body lies down, the spirit of grace comes wanting to show you the steps you must take? Men have woken up out of dreams and visions into enviable destinies. An example of such a man was Solomon. Solomon went to bed, ladies and gentlemen, and by the advantage of dreams and visions, God came to him and a destiny-altering transaction happened. Solomon, what should I give you whilst you are asleep? Do you know that the revelation about the captivity of the nation of Israel alongside their exodus came to Abraham when he fell asleep? It was in a dream and in a vision God came to him that a time will come a people will be... Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. If you miss the opportunity of dreams and visions being used as a prophetic tool, you will miss out a lot in destiny. I remember in 2013, God had already helped us and we're doing well in ministry. Hallelujah. We had just started Koinonia now. And I remember I was feeling a stirring in my heart. Should we move to Abuja? And then a prophetic encounter. I think it was a dream or so. I saw 
a plane lift from Zaria on its way coming to Abuja before it will land it crashed and immediately I knew and it was written here and I there immediately I knew that this thing was not of God I think someone else had the same experience and sent me a text to say listen this is what I saw I knew by the advantage of dreams that even though it was in my prophetic blueprint it was not yet the timing you can see what is right and not know the timing you will still fail as if you are in error pay attention to what you are learning tonight because for somebody God is reigniting the gift of dreams purifying your dreams again there are many people hear me there are many people who danger had been averted in their lives because of the power of dreams, the power of visions. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. There are many people today with all due respect to them who should not have died if they knew how to buy into God's voice using the medium of dreams and visions. For others they saw, but they could not understand what was being said dreams visions have you ever wondered why people go to bed and as soon as they lay their head a miracle happens is that not what happened to jacob in chapter 28 of genesis the bible says he went to um now laws and lay down there to sleep the bible says when the man went to bed oh suddenly he had a dream and he saw a ladder that connected the earth to the heavens and God speaking there. I can tell you, ladies and gentlemen, many of the questions you have been asking God, Lord, what is the next phase of my life? Should I stay in Abuja? Should I go to America? If you understand and receive this gift of the seeing eye, you will marvel and wonder that you will go to bed and one night's sleep will download the destiny, the next 10 years of your life. You will stand up and be writing like someone is dictating and you will take steps that lead you triumphantly it's an advantage that the saints have dreams and visions and satan wants to abort and sabotage your destiny he tries to stop you from seeing because satan is a master at creating blindness are we together he does not just blind your mind he blinds your eyes he blinds your understanding Two things, when Satan wants to destroy the life of dreams and visions, he will manipulate it so that you keep taking wrong steps in honor of what you are seeing and you keep failing. Then a time will come in disappointment, you will no longer trust what you see. Are we together? I saw this, I took a step, later I found out it was not God. I saw this, I took a step, later I found out it was not God. It will plant fear in you, so that the next thing you see, you say, no, my hand is not there again. I will not make this mistake. And in it, you will lose precious opportunities. Do you know that the rescue of Jesus as a baby came by revelation to Joseph through a dream? If dreams were not powerful and were not God ordained, God will not use it. The best channel to communicate the rescue of the Savior who could die was a dream. Hallelujah. When believers go to sleep, I hope you know, sit down please. The first thing Satan manipulated in the life of Adam and Eve, Eve particularly, was their eyes. The dynamics of the fall of man started with his speaking, his manipulation, but it went to their eyes. The Bible says when the woman saw, what she heard was there, but until it affected what she saw, it had no power over her. Regardless what the serpent was saying, she still had her stamina. And her nakedness was not there regardless the information, but the moment it translated to an alteration of her vision, when she saw, she acted upon what she saw and fell. Hallelujah. In fact, it was, it was Paul, I believe, who was speaking. He said, I fear lest Satan beguile you with the same subtlety that he used 
for Eve in the garden. Do you know how he made them fall? He manipulated the power of their sight. He casted an image upon them and they responded to that image to their detriment. Question, do you know what happened to the four lepers and the people who ran away and brought blessings to Samaria? It was first a manipulation of what they heard but it was beyond what they heard i believe with all my my heart that their eyes had a role to play what you hear may not be enough to you can't just be running because you had sounds there has to be something your eyes see to convince you because you can doubt what you hear but you cannot doubt what you see there are times that when you place a call you are hearing someone's voice, but either because there is a network problem or perhaps the person has some cold, he's not able to speak clearly. And sometimes you are seeing eye. There are people who left where their helpers were and traveled to where their enemies were, not knowing. Literally took their hands to their enemies because they lacked the seeing eye. Ladies and gentlemen, your confidence in life is highly predicated on your ability to see. The prophet, in spite of the threat of the armies, he stood still in confidence because his servant was blind. And God said, I know the problem of this man and inspired the prophet to open his eyes. And he saw that they that were with them were by far greater than they that were against them. Ladies and gentlemen, when you have the seen eye, as a man of God, you can look at five members and see nations. The seeing eye, the seeing eye, right from the days of nothing by the grace of God and the days of no influence, no voice, no whatever, by the privilege of the seeing eye, our confidence was still high, knowing that God does not lie. Can I tell you, when God shows you the future, you will stand confident. You will dance in the midst of nothing like a madman because you are seeing what others are not seeing. You will get up from a dream. You will get up from a vision and tap your loved ones and say, hallelujah, deliverance has come for this family. They will say, we don't understand what you are saying. They will say, I have seen it. Hallelujah. When there was a storm, the apostle got up and said, you know what? Have no fear. The angel of the Lord has appeared to me and he showed me that there shall be no loss. And the Bible says upon that confidence, they soared through the storm until they arrived at an island called Melita. The storms in your life today are overwhelming you and telling on your integrity as far as your love for God is concerned because you have no eyes to see beyond the now. If you have the eyes to see beyond the now, you will sit even in the midst of nothing and sing praises and give thanks because you have seen beyond the now. Please sit down. Dreams and visions. When it's time to pray, we are going to ask the Lord, purify my dreams, purify my vision. And for some of you, I don't know what happened to your Christian life, that your visions are not clear again or you do not even see. There are some of you, you were so graced and gifted by God. You can literally sit down like you are watching me and watch the movies of your destiny unravel. Either through carelessness, familiarity, or lack of discernment, you lost it. Tonight, may there be a restoration. I say it again, may there be a restoration. that I may receive my sight. The sight I lost, that I may receive my sight. When God gives you the... It was through a dream that the Lord spoke to Abimelech. When Abimelech was going to take Abraham's wife, a dream came. Yes, Mr. Man. This is a covenant woman, a covenant child is coming out of this. You are a dead man already if you fight this, this vision. And Abimelech got up in the morning and said, I'm sorry, and gave Abraham gifts. That's how he left Egypt wealthy. Hallelujah. Can I tell you the truth? You must pray for a resurrection of your dreams. Our fathers, some of them were not educated. But my goodness, through the channel of dreams and visions, they walked in accuracy that did not make sense. They said things five years before it happened.
you have your eyes open already what you are praying for tonight is not just an open eyes it's a seeing eye your eyes have been open for far too long but the veil is still upon you and you continue to fall prey to the vicissitudes of life let me give you number two is God helping someone the gift of sight number two the moment the believer receives the gift of sight the second area that begins to speak in your life are you ready now is your imaginations and your creativity write it down mm. the first revelation of the Holy Spirit in Scripture was not as a healing spirit was not even as a restoring spirit it was as a creative spirit when God gives you the miracle of open eyes, hear me, the second area in your life that is activated is your imagination and your creativity. And you please listen to what I have to say here. The mental pictures and the goals and the plans that frame your destiny are a product of this advantage. Otherwise, you will cook up things by yourself that have no blueprint. God can breathe upon your mind and you will come up with prophetic pictures that begin to spell the goal for the next level of your life. In Genesis chapter 11, 1 to 5, we see the power of imagination. The whole earth was of one language and one speech. And then the Bible says it came to pass that as they journeyed, they found a plain in the line of China and dwelt there. Verse 3. The Bible says they said to one another, Go to, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. Let us make stone and slime for mortar. Verse 4. And then the Bible says they said, Let us build a city and a tower whose top may reach the heavens. And let us make us a name lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the earth. Verse 5. And the Lord came down to see. He didn't come down to hear. He came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Let's read verse 6. The Bible says, And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. Hallelujah. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined. Your imagination is a miracle. God deposited that ability in you because your imagination like the prophetic can go into the future, can go into yesterday. Your imagination can go to places that you cannot yet go physically. Imagination. Is someone learning? In Exodus chapter 31, 1 to 6, Exodus 31, 1 to 6, having given Moses, watch this, it was through these supernatural encounters, Moses received the blueprint of the tabernacle in the wilderness. But how was it going to come to pass? The Lord spake unto Moses, saying, verse 2, See, I have called by name Bezalel, the son of Ure, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah. Uh -huh. I have filled him with the spirit of God in wisdom and in understanding and in knowledge and in all manner of workmanship. What for? To devise cunning works. To work in gold, in silver, in brass. Verse 5. And in cutting of stones to set them and in carvings of timber and to work all manner of workmanship final verse and I behold I have given with him a heel up the son of all that name of the tribe of Dan and in the hearts of all that are wise-hearted I have put wisdom that they may make all that I have commanded thee. You have partnered with demon spirits and continue to come up with witty inventions, ideas that redefine civilization. And believers do not know that the miracle of sight can translate to a creative mind. When you know this, it will tell on the kinds of songs that you bring from the spirit. Yes, sir. 
Some of these songs that you hear and you wonder how did this person write this song? I can tell you it's not just visions and dreams. Not all of them were just received verbatim. They sat down and the breath of the spirit came upon their creativity and they conjured words and melodies together that your heart cannot stop singing. Creativity. Creativity. There are people today who have been rewarded by nations because they sustain the intelligence to download superior technological ideas, superior solutions via the medium of creativity and imagination. Hmm. You want to prosper? Here is where that possibility comes upon you. The breath of the Almighty you will think out creative ideas. God will show you things that others are not seeing. And with it, God will begin to rewrite your life. And believe me, this works. Is someone learning? There are people today who design clothes. And there is no end to their creativity. There are architects today who have designed whole cities and nations. How do you think those things came? I hope you know anything you imagine, you only imagine it because it already exists. If it does not exist, it cannot be captured in your imagination. Anything that finds itself in your imagination, it is because it has a frame in the realm of the spirit already. Your assignment is to culture your creativity such that you see and edit the thoughts and the pictures that are inconsistent with your destiny and select the ones that will give material frame to God's speakings in your life. The fact that you can imagine a thing means it already exists. You think I'm joking? Ask people in the movie industry. You think I'm joking? Ask architects. You think I'm joking? Ask professionals. Ask artists. There are artworks today that are worth tens and hundreds of millions of dollars. Out of nowhere you say, someone just began to paint. No, you lied. It was always there. It was simply transported and it followed the gate of imagination. So your Bible says, Ephesians 3.20, Now unto him, who is able to do exceeding abundantly, far above all we ask some versions will say, imagine, imagine, imagine. Can I tell you the truth? If you lack this faculty of creativity and imagination, after one week of preaching, you will not have sermons again. Did you hear what I said? It is beyond seeing visions. The realm of imagination and creativity is also the realm where productivity lies. There is no end to the vast resources of intelligence that comes out from within your mind. I preach an average of two or three messages every week with all humility and by the grace of God. I've been doing this for many years. You imagine once upon a time, I think one of my phones crashed and that was when I realized that I lost over 800 sermons that I had prepared. 800 sermons and everything just went and I had to start again. I wept like Jesus at the tomb of Lazarus. But after that, <laughs> where it came from the first place is still there. Mm, still there. Listen, those who understand this have manifested superhuman attributes and we have found names for them. Genesis we call some they have only tapped into that possibility Truly there is the miracle of the seen eye that tells on your creativity The songs that come from you these guys watch this this my dear people are here playing these instruments I hope you know that when you play any of these instruments you are not really told what to play It is that faculty that is responsible for this that is what is needed to drive. There are people who always have accidents as far as they go out. The moment they go out, they will hit another car. I can tell you something is wrong with this realm of creativity. You are a businessman. I show you a formula. You can lock yourself. I'm going to be showing you how to prime this, my goodness. Ah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 
when you understand this as a designer you will start dressing kings they will say where did this thing come from you will say your mind but the truth is it came from the realm of the spirit only waiting for the gate of your imagination would it allow it to pass all the businesses that thrive today from Facebook to Twitter to those who design to those who have made all kinds of the spirit of creativity and imagination civilization is so constructed as an honor to creativity and imagination if you resurrect someone now who was alive 400 years when he comes upon the earth he will be shocked what is this thing I'm holding they say a phone a phone what is this thing you are wearing and you give it all kinds of descriptions there are literally people who are hired because either by divination or by instincts they have trained their creativity and imagination they can sit down and look at things and say no there is a better way do you know for instance that the glorious future building of koinonia is already in the spirit is there it's not in the mind of an architect is there predetermined by the counsel of God but it takes someone agreeing with God and then you receive through creativity my life has changed because of this sermons have come from this realm your do you know your approach to the study of scripture will change when you have creativity there are things you will see that a person whose creativity has not been empowered will not see creativity I think I was told as, as a story that I understand that God's servant has shared himself that while they were building, you know, the faith tabernacle now, um, there was a time that there was, they needed to push some gadget inside and then it was just maybe a fractions of inches higher than the door and it would not go in. And the people wanted to break the door and then push it in. And he said, no, stop. He said, there's a way out. And they said, there's no way out, sir. How do we push? He said, there is a way out. And he went and stood and prayed and he came out. He said, deflate the tire a little, push it in and pump it back. There will always be a way. I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus Lift it up, exalted, I receive, I manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see Jesus. Lift it up, glorify one song that can come from that realm can sort you and your generation and your children's children there are people today who are not musicians but they partnered with spirits and came up with ideas ladies and gentlemen the cure for poverty is found in this realm not just visions when the spirit moves upon you as a creative spirit you will come up with products listen People give me all kinds of gifts and I'm really honored to have them. And sometimes I look at the things people give me and I wonder what kind of mind they had to have created some of the gifts that they have. Hallelujah. I remember one time someone gave me something, you just hook the tip of it, just in something that looks like a rod. No matter how you shake that thing, it will never fall. Just a tip of it. I don't know how, what kind of thinking. You play with it like a child playing. It never falls. The one time president of the United States was asked, what an omnipresence. You never would have believed that I can be everywhere. Now that can be simulated through the power of the internet. Only God knows what is left in the spirit waiting for men and women who have the seeing eye only God knows what is left ladies and gentlemen hallelujah 
I traveled to a particular nation some time back and visiting a few of their top entrepreneurs, I had the opportunity to visit one of the offices. They facilitate transactions. And I was told that about 95% of the transaction in that nation passes through that platform. So I had the opportunity to sit and have a discussion with them, headed by a woman, very unassuming but powerful woman. The focus was not on the animal, but on the four. And he said, this, I'm seeing a jacket. Not just an animal moving full of hair. Another person looks at a tree and is thinking firewood. Another person is thinking and say, no, this is a table that kings will sit on. I met a young man not too long ago and this gentleman now works with the Dubai government and they released some very serious money and when he was sharing with me the idea he came up with I was tempted to ask him how old are you well you see that doesn't matter creativity make sure when I ask you to lay your hands on your head even if it's two of your hands you will lay there you must cry in the spirit Lord this faculty of imagination something must come out of it that will feed my children something must come out of it that will serve your purposes hallelujah someone came up with an idea called smart homes by the spirit it has redefined architecture and building today you find young people in their early and mid 20s marvelously blessed sitting down with the kings of nations and signing contracts because of their mind not their size not their age that I may receive my sight that I may receive my sight everything you go to a restaurant and pay hundred thousand for is available in the farm someone saw how to combine it in a way you do not know and you have to pay for your ignorance sometimes almost forever are we together one time someone gave me I have a lot of those gifts someone gave me a cup and that cup when you pour hot water it changes it brings out something whether your picture or whatever they put there and I'm saying my goodness this is someone thinking oh this is someone thinking ladies and gentlemen once upon a time they sell ice water you put it in an ice a, 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 a leather and then you keep it and then when you buy it you can't take it because it's iced you have to impatiently endure until it defrosts then you now take it and someone looked at it and said no kings will not take this creativity I don't know who I'm speaking to today but it may not be demons that are keeping your business where it is or maybe your law firm or maybe whatever it is the world has a messless honor and recognition for creative people when you are creative and that by the spirit nobody will ask you where you are coming from again creativity 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 by the power of the Holy Spirit are you ready to lay your hands on your head in one minute please lay your hands and cry a cry in one minute father breathe upon my mind let my imagination come alive let my creativity come alive let my imagination come alive let my creativity come alive someone is praying let my imagination come alive let my creativity come alive keep praying spirit of the living god i receive the gift of the seeing eye let my creativity come alive. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. As you travel around the world sometimes, you are almost tempted to say, Africa, did they cause us? 
Nigeria, was it a curse that came on us? And even if it's a curse, we rebuke it in Jesus' name. But you find out people with the same mind. You go around the world and see what teenagers are doing. Redefining the civilization across many, many places. Literally, they sit down and come up with witty inventions. Did you know that in the 50s and 60s, you would not hold a mic like this? If you gave someone a mic like this, he probably may run away. But now someone has done, and this is even a lot of old school. I still like it, but it's old school. There are people who, they don't even, I mean, they just, just say something that looks like my button. And that's it. Creativity. Many Christians remain poor, remain mediocre, and they are crying, Oh God, who will arise to bless me? The question is, what needs to arise from within your spirit? Creativity. There are many people today saying, I'm a graduate. I read this. I read that. They have degrees, but they are not creative. They are not innovative. And the tuition, we are told, where average people who did not have the ability to pay a very large amount as school fees would at least be able to go to school. But how would he raise that money? And then history tells us that he sat down and taught and taught and taught and taught and said there has to be a way. He needed millions of dollars as a then to be able to establish the university. But from, you know, from his, his, the, his, that current condition, nobody was willing to give him that kind of money. And history tells us that he sat down and found an idea and he started traveling all across the United States holding seminars as large as this kind of meetings and he began to teach people what some of you may call or know as the acres of diamond it was a story I don't want to go into it since I'm preaching but that story the morale was to help people appreciate what they had within them that before you go out searching for things elsewhere, search within and you'll find out that what you are looking around for is in your house. And he went around the United States and people were so inspired by his talk and his lectures, he earned millions of dollars and there were support systems that rose up for him. People were so inspired and decided to partner with his vision until that university was founded. Someone said there is a way out. Let the devil hear you. Let your destiny hear you. Don't use that word impossible again. Settle down and say there is a way out. Lord, there is a way out. This issue of living from hand to mouth. I don't have to be an armed robber to survive. There is a way out. Spirit of the living God, breathe upon my mind. There is a creative way. And then while you are doing that, hear me. An idea that may not make sense. Can I tell you, I wish I had time to teach you on priming creativity. Many of the ideas you will receive will be worthless. Respect them by writing them, even if you don't execute them. Among the many supposedly useless ideas, you are priming your creativity. Like you are mining gold or like you are mining oil. A lot of rubbish will come out first, but you just respect it and something will come out very precious. That one thing that comes out is what can change your life. Are we together? Yeah. There are people who write songs. They can write 100 songs. They will be ashamed of singing 60 because it does not even make any sense. But they still continue. And then by the law of time and chance, they will write out something, just one song, and it sends them to the nations. Hallelujah creativity let me tell you honestly sometimes when I wake up in the night I can just play worship like this and sit down and I pray in the spirit for a while and then I just sit quietly you'll be learning when I show you the keys that meditation is one of the ways to be creative the power of meditation in your silence spirit of the living God I'm here the ministry that you have given me there has to be a way out. What is the next five years to be like? What is the next 10 years to be like? You may not see a vision. You may not have a dream. But an inspiration will come from heaven. Through the door of your creativity. 
Are we together now? Oh, start organizing this. Start doing this now. Start empowering this now. This one will come up and that's the end of it. Number three, let's hurry up. Hmm. Is someone ready? When you receive the gift of sight, the seen eye, the third area that is activated in your life is the capacity to have insight from scripture. The capacity to have insight from scripture is proof that your eyes have been opened. The capacity to have insight from scripture, Ephesians 1, 17 and 18. The capacity to have insight that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom. Watch this. In the revelation of him. Let's read 18 together. One to read. The eyes of your understanding. Hold on. That's it there. Insight. The eyes. Your understanding has an eye. And the Bible says it can be enlarged. That ye glory. Isaiah 29. Interesting version. I think it's called New Century Version or so. NCV. If you can't find it, let's just work with what we have. But I, as I was going through several versions because I wanted to see what they said about this scripture, I found a version called NCV. I think that should be New Century Version or so. I think it's one of the modern versions. And it puts it in a very profound way. But here it says, And the vision of all is become unto you. Watch this. Like the words of a book that is sealed. The New Century Version says that is closed and sealed. Which men deliver to one who is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot read it. Why? Because it is sealed. Twelve. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. And he said, I'm not even learned in the first place. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me. This Bible you see is both closed and sealed. I have taught you. The closing of it is physical, but the sealing of it is spiritual. So just because you open this like this does not mean it is open. Your hand has opened it, but the seal has not been unlocked. So you will read it and at best just read history and read archaeology and read literature but when the seal is broken you will now begin to see things that you never knew were there and those who have this seeing eye can carry a scripture you have been reading every day by the time they open it onto you sometimes you feel annoyed and say god this is not fair i've read this all my life i even have it as an inscription in my house as a wallpaper and yet my eyes did not see it. When your eyes are opened and when you receive the gift of the seeing eye, the gift of sight, you must have insight, unusual insight into the mysteries of scripture. Hmm. Is someone learning? You will open your Bible and you can stay on one verse for one week because of the depth of what you have found there. It does not make sense. When you have the gift of sight, you can literally open Genesis 1 verse 1 and bring out 20 sermons from verse 1. And I say that without exaggeration. In the beginning, God, you can stop there. That already is a sermon that can be a series. In the beginning, God. Leave the other things. In the beginning, God. And you stop there created the heavens and the earth meaning he was not in any of them you can start there john 3 16 for god so loved the world by by the inspiration that comes from scripture you can look at this scripture and draw forth many sermons draw forth insights that can build your life build your business build your family hallelujah for God so loved the world. 
So your extent of giving is a measure of the depth of your love. He so loved, he gave his only. He so loved, he gave his only. That's the only thing your eyes will see. So if I so love, I can give even my only. If I cannot give my only, the problem is not my hand. The problem is the extent of my love. If I cannot give my all to my vision, it's because I do not so love it. If I cannot give my all to my family, it's because I cannot so love them. That in itself, a family series can come out of this because of insight into scripture. For God so loved the world that he gave. Another person will recite this as a memory verse. Recite your solution and still die because you do not have insight. Elihu said there is a spirit in man. Job 32 and verse 8. And the breath, the inspiration of the Almighty, he says, give them understanding. Hallelujah. Every time I pray, I ask the Lord to quicken my understanding and to grant me truly the gift of sight. When you receive this every part, I believe that in, in my encounters where the light of Jesus came to me, this was one of the things that he was doing. Light entered me. And it was like a straight line from Genesis to Revelation. You literally open any part of the Bible and you can see something. What is this now? Insight into scripture. There are good, sincere men of God who are already weary. Once it is Saturday, they are crying because they don't know what to preach again. They've preached on kindness, the gift of the Spirit, rapture, angels, salvation, purpose. The sermons are over. They've consulted all kinds of materials and preached it. And that's the end of it. There are business people who are tired because they are tired of the routine that the bankruptcy of creativity and lack of insight brings. Ladies and gentlemen, can I tell you this? Especially if you're a minister of the gospel, you must obtain grace from the Spirit to have insight into Scripture so that you can draw forth mysteries. How do you know that you have had insight into Scripture? Because you will be able to draw forth solutions from stories, solutions from scripture reciting it is not where the mystery is there is something hidden within the story hidden within the parable you can draw half of a scripture in genesis combine it with half of a scripture in judges combine it with another half scripture in nahum and it creates a whole picture that only you can sell to the body of Christ that becomes a new word compliant insight that brings the saints to certain levels of power. Say insight. One more time, say insight. I'm praying in the name of Jesus that the book will be open and that the seals will be broken. The seals will be broken. May your eyes see it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. I attend meetings with all humility almost every week and all of these meetings have their topics that you are given. They have their topics and some of those topics may be spiritual in nature. Others would demand that you outsource intelligence from other fields to add to your knowledge of the word. If you do not have insight into scripture and generally insight into things, you should be able to look at an orange and see beyond an orange. Have insight. Is someone learning? Number four. When you receive the miracle of a seen eye, the gift of sight, what is the fourth area that will be activated in your life? Are you ready? Prophetic revelations. Prophetic revelations. I want you to listen now. Number one, visions and dreams. Number two, your creativity and imagination. Number three, insight from scripture. Number four, prophetic revelations. John 16, 13. 
prophetic revelations you do not have to be a prophet to be prophetic I said it while I was teaching this morning in Lagos that there is the office of a prophet but there is the operation of the prophetic and you do not have to be a prophet to have that privilege every believer has the liberty of operating prophetically Jesus said when he the spirit of truth is come please look up he will guide you into all truth it says for he shall not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear he shall speak help me read the last sentence and he will show you things to come 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 the word of knowledge comes under this category also the ability to have insight into events past and events present the moment it becomes futuristic is no longer the word of knowledge the jurisdiction of the word of knowledge is access to events past and events present the moment you begin to speak about the future that is prophecy not word of knowledge the word of knowledge has a jurisdiction because it deals with events past and events present hallelujah revelations 1 verse 1 and then we do 4 verse 1 the revelation of Jesus Christ which he gave unto him to show unto his servants the things which must surely come to pass to show his servants what the things which must shortly come to pass the things which must shortly come to pass imagine that by prophetic insight you have access to what will happen tomorrow Tuesday Wednesday Thursday concerning your life concerning your family Revelations 4 and verse 1 4 and verse 1 after this I looked and behold a door was opened in heaven and the first voice which I heard as it were of a trumpet talking with me which said come up hither and I will show you the things that must be hereafter when God gives you the miracle of the seen eyes you will start seeing in the spirit seeing in the spirit is different from dreams in many ways it's even different from visions you are literally caught up like Ezekiel was caught up and he was brought into certain realms where he saw things this is very powerful in first Kings chapter 5 the full text is from verse 20 down to 27 the story of Naaman Gehazi and Elisha the Bible tells us that when Naaman was healed he returned back with gifts to say thank you second Kings 5 he came to say thank you and when he said thank you Elisha told him don't worry carry your gifts and go away with it and while he was saying that the Bible says Gehazi remember this are Gehazi the guy was hot and angry and said how could this man lose such an opportunity like this and he came out and smuggled his way to follow the chariot and Gehazi the servant of Elisha the man of God said behold my master had spared Naaman this Syrian not receiving at his hands that which he brought but as the Lord live it can you imagine he's even mentioning the Lord there I will run after him and take some word of him next verse so Gehazi followed after Naaman and when Naaman saw him running after him he lighted down from the chariot to meet him and said is all well uh-huh and he said all is well my master had sent me saying this is how many people will be cheated in their organizations because they do not have the seen eye someone will go and misrepresent you and say well I was sent by this boss I was sent by this preacher and because we do not have the seen eye you will be misrepresented in the face of people because there are individuals within your organization that may be compromising out of your values but because you do not have the eyes to see let's finish up behold even now 
there be come unto me from Mount Ephraim two young men. Look at how he cooked up that lie. He wasted his creativity. You see that? That all this story just came out like word of knowledge. Two young men of the sons of the prophets. I hope you know lies taps into creativity because you don't rehearse lies. If you rehearse lies, the Holy Spirit will most likely convict you while you are rehearsing it and say, is this worth it? And you now say, I repent to God, I'm sorry. So when you can literally stand before people and lie for hours and as the lie is coming, when you realize there's a loophole, another creativity covers the lie. Let's finish this scripture, please. Koinonia, don't do this to me. I pray thee, he said, a talent of silver and two changes of raiment. Let's finish up. And then Naaman said, be content, take two talents. And he urged him and bound two talents of silver in two bags and two changes of raiment and laid them upon two of his servants and they bear them before him. Uh -huh. We're reading to 27. And when he came to the tower, he took them from their hand and bestowed them in the house and he let the men go and they departed. 25 but he went in and stood before his master said the seeing eye and Elisha said unto him from where are you coming listen when people who have eyes ask you certain questions just tell the truth because to lie is to complicate the situation again he would have just said sir you have seen I know you have seen something I'm sorry let's finish that scripture from whence cometh thou Gehazi? And he said, Thy servant went not with her. I didn't go anywhere. And he said unto him, When not my heart, or some versions who say my spirit, was my spirit not with you, when the man turned again from his chariot. Look at him describing this. He was not in a crusade ground, he was in his house. When he turned from his chariot, my God, only God knows how many people are seeing what you are doing. You are not alone, no. Who else saw it? <laughs> From his chariot, while you were collecting the bribe, you were alone in the room as you hid it. Is it true that you were alone? Oh, it's angels and the realm of the spirit. No, there are men who have the seen eye. Hallelujah. Is it a time to receive money and to receive garments? Look at how he described. How do you lie? He has already told you what you received. Money and garment. And olive yards, vineyards, sheep, oxen, manservant, main servant. 27. And in anger he's costing. The leprosy therefore of Neman shall cleave to thee and unto thy seed forever. There is no mention of the man saying have mercy. And he went out from his presence immediately a leper as white as snow. What a fearful prophet. It didn't take three days old. As he was speaking, a man just became leprous immediately. The power of the seeing eye. Every time you have insight into things in the realm of the spirit, you can create possibilities sometimes in a moment. This is the reason why when people prophesy, they speak from that altitude in the spirit. God has granted them access to sight and they can say be blessed and immediately realities just materialize and manifest in your life. It is true. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you believe this? Prophetic revelations. The Bible says that men and women can see. It is the privilege of believers to see. To see into the spirit. And you can know. You can walk in the spirit. You can literally be carried in the spirit. And you do not have to be a prophet. It is the strength of your secret place. The health of your spirit man. Hallelujah. I did not even know that there was a prophetic dimension to my life when I started having supernatural experiences. It was just blind hunger, loving Jesus. 
and unfortunately in my case it was a mix of all kinds of spirits remember i shared with you about this oppression that i would have in my room and then these spirits would just open my door literally and begin to press you and now you are in the world of the spirit but you are not able to manifest physically you see that now let me tell you something that just to educate our minds watch this if i am here now standing with another individual the moment i am open to the realm of the spirit the person standing close to me will be affected by that reality because i have opened a portal he may not know what has happened to him are we together now is the reason why people carry their atmospheres oh dear yes it is true people carry their atmospheres when paul as saul encountered jesus the other people in the donkey they did not know what was happening but they fell as a result of it you get that yeah so if my eyes is open and i'm seeing something now there will be a reaction within the circumference it doesn't matter anybody within there because a portal has been opened it's a vista it's a gateway it's an access point it will affect everybody within that circumference and this is the idea of walking under a, an open heavens that through consecration yieldedness and alignment you literally become a walking portal you are a conduit point are we together now yes when that happens to you as a man of god you become a mysterious blessing you will carry the power of god your assignment is to take the glory to meetings and the moment you stand there that portal is opened beyond just your preaching and singing all kinds of spiritual activities are happening angels ascending and descending anointings and mantles are pouring upon people whilst you are speaking hallelujah you can be affected by another man's spiritual atmosphere you can be affected by another man's spiritual atmosphere spiritual atmospheres are communicable you can be affected by another man's prayer life you can be affected by another man's spiritual climate men walk with their climates they carry their climates listen have you ever entered a room and you just sense that they've been gossiping in this room there's jealousy because these things are an interaction with the realm of the spirit as casual as they sound and the realm of the spirit has presence components that follow it hatred has a presence jealousy has a presence love has a presence power has a presence creativity has a presence it is true hallelujah that is the reason why you can listen to a man and by listening to that man and opening your spirit his atmosphere can prime your own atmosphere and you will begin to experience what that person is experiencing it is true it is true blessed is he who comes in the name of our god blessed is he who comes in the name of our God, blessed is He who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is He who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is He who comes in the name of our God. Blessed is He who comes in the name of our God. hallelujah you can enter a house where a man through the sacrifice of spiritual exercises has literally opened a portal there and the man may not be around you can sit alone in the living room and certain interactions in the spirit are happening to you because you came under a portal and open heavens this is true 
So if a man carries his spiritual climate, it can have an effect on you. It's true. Most high, most high, most high, most high, most high, most high, most high. Hallelujah. Now hear me ladies and gentlemen. Those who will be champions in the spirit in this end time are those who will be interested in receiving the gift of sight. The gift of the seen eye. Not the open eye. Your eye can be open and yet you are blind. Parakatos kadibalakosia. Your eye can be open, man of God, and yet you are blind. There is the miracle of sight. Blind Bartimeo said that I may receive my sight. He didn't say that my eyes be open, that I may receive my sight. And Jesus said, then receive your sight. It is a gift, you can receive it. ability to see prophetically the ability to see through the mind of your imagination the ability to see to draw insight from scripture the ability to take advantage of dreams and visions and rewrite your destiny how could you fail with these systems of advantage no most high most high, most high, most high, most high, most high. Something is happening to you, most high. Most high, ah, most high, most high, most high. Hear me. Can you tell me what the next phase of your destiny is in ministry? If your answer is no. Then be ready to pray the prayer we're about to pray now. It is a risk to walk not knowing God's prophetic blueprint for your future. That would be a blind man and that would be a risk in life and destiny. You cannot wait for situations and circumstances to define your movement. And it is a risk to guess blindly just based on instincts. You need the gift of sight. To know with certainty what God wants you to do. To know with certainty what the ministry should do. To know with certainty the next phase of your business. Hallelujah. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. By the power of the seen eye, the Lord himself spoke to it was Philip now and told him join this chariot and when he joined that chariot it was the utopian eunuch and that simple obedience brought him salvation because the man was reading and he said please tell me of whom is this is this about himself or another and they began a discussion ladies and gentlemen can I tell you if you do not have the eyes that see your helpers will pass you you will call enemies friends. You will call friends enemies. If you do not have the eyes that see, you will call demonic doors open doors and you will enter them to your destruction. If you do not have the eyes that see, 
you can be watching things that will destroy you and enter into it headlong for there is a way that seemeth right unto a man but the end thereof are the ways of death hear me i can tell you with all humility narrow escapes that have happened in my life and destiny in ministry simply because of the gift of sight meetings i always i almost went that i should not have gone and thank god i did not go associations i almost would have been part of but by the gift of sight many of you right now are in regrets respectfully speaking relationships that were going to destroy you you did not see you called the man an angel until you found out he was a devil you called the woman a queen or a princess until you found out it was something that would destroy you and unfortunately i hate to be a bearer of bad news some of you went further and now you have been trapped in painful experiences that only the mercy of god will help you through hallelujah there are people today who made costly mistakes there are certain courses they should have studied in the university but because they did not have the eyes to see their destiny they veered off and invested time and energy only to find out they may never never need it it did not help them in any way and some of you right now god has given you the gift of children but you do not have the eyes to see their future when jacob was about to die he called his sons he said come let me tell you your future one by one they started filing up and he would describe them and bless them describe them and bless them describe them and bless them hallelujah can i tell you as a leader when you have the gift of sight you will know who to put in what unit and who to put in what department i was doing a, a, a teaching in enugu i think it was a week or two about two weeks ago and i was saying leadership is the ability to combine imperfect people to produce a system that works you will never find people perfect people in your life because you are not yourself and yet you will have to make do with those fragile resources both human and monetary but the ability to know by the power of sight that putting this guy in finance department is a risk no matter how the person he has a perpetual weakness with money yet he's a creative person there are people who are very diligent but they have tendencies of disloyalty there are those who are not creative but they are loyal and all this will be sent to you by god it is your ability to see many people have allowed sentiments to make them put the wrong people you put a man who does not have compassion for the sheep as a lead pastor and then the person does not have the time whether they cry he does not care it's not like he's a bad person he's just not a pastor unfortunately the gift of sight and can I tell you when you have the gift of sight you can look at somebody who is stubborn and supposedly wicked today and you will see the greatest gift in your life and when people say can I, how come this gentleman or how come this lady this person should be out of your school or this person should be out of your house and you look at them in the midst of their imperfections because you have seen what their tomorrow looks like you will endure until you build them and they become leaders who do not have the power of sight will throw away some of the greatest gifts in their life some of the most anointed men and women in this ministry by the grace of god if you had seen them when they came they did not look like it but the ability to see the cleaner who is cleaning your house now you will be surprised that that is the person who can die for you even more than your children the person may not be able to speak yes he has tendencies and he's stealing 10 naira 20 naira here but it's just a mindset that was manipulated by spirits the person still has the purity of heart can you look beyond people's actions the sin i will help you to forgive the sin i will help you to know how to tolerate people it gives you the staying power to give people a chance to rise but the sin i will also caution you 
and tell you this person will remain the same even after 20 years beware now before you cry tomorrow the seeing eye some of you God warned you about many people years ago but sentiments you were wrapped up with sentiments until they now became a plague to your organization a plague to your life can I tell you one of the greatest gifts in my life is the eyes that see the one you see is not the only one I have you can watch people and as you see people you are seeing things beyond what the eyes you can you can be given access to people's tendencies access to people's weaknesses access to people's limitations not to laugh at and condemn them but to be able to know where to take them and where not to take them how to guide them and how not to guide them for me i will not do what elisha did i will not cause leprosy on the person but i will say gehazi be careful this is a revelation that you are not ready to receive the mantle what do we do about this now perhaps he would have been called prophet gehazi there are many people today who left destiny helpers they should not have left like lot and made certain mistakes and if not for the intervention of Abraham, Lot would have died in Sodom and Gomorrah. I know that that uncle may be harsh. That auntie may be harsh. It looks like they always show tribalism and sentiments. But if you have the seen eye, God will say remain in that house. As, as harsh as that treatment is, that is the greatest university that can make a leader out of you. Running around and looking for comfort will produce a weak person. And in the midst of that pain, it is true that they may accuse you and insult you and call you names and you want to leave and God says stay there if you have the eyes that see one day that harsh man and his harsh wife will call you and say I don't like you oh but God gave us an instruction he said we should build you a house and empower you to go and when you tell people it was Pharaoh that gave you gold they will not believe it if you were in Egypt and they ask you where will you get gold from you probably will say Canaan sometimes gold will still come from the Egypt that persecuted you the very place of your pain is where your treasure will come from but do you have the grace to stay until you receive it or will you hurry out of Egypt and leave empty-handed if they had left Egypt two weeks before the time appointed they would not go with the gold that they will use to build the tabernacle hallelujah is someone hearing what I'm saying there are people today who left Nigeria and as soon as they arrived where they arrived they knew that their decision was a superior decision because everything showed that their destinies were not here there were others who were blindly copying and they just got up as soon as they left Nigeria their destiny helpers got to where they had been walking and they got there where the people were and they were nowhere to be found and some of them with all due respect are living like fugitives in a strange land we are going to take five minutes and I'm going to leave you with your maker you're going to cry Lord deliver me from blindness open up my eyes and give me the gift of sight go ahead and pray open up my eyes give me the gift of sight the ability to see the seeing eye the eye that sees the future the eye that redeems the future dominion over time someone pray someone pray someone pray I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 glory be to God. I, 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 Glory. 
glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Say glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory, glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hear me. Hear me. In the name of Jesus. Father, what chariot should I be joining in this season? What partnerships do I need in this season to break out of and to become part of? Who is an ally indeed in this season? It will not come by physical appearance. You will need the ability to see. What should I be studying and meditating upon right now? What business will produce the next wealthy people in the next five years? Don't assume the seen eye is the solution. Take a minute and pray. You are praying. Don't be distracted. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you to one more prayer and after that there is a rain that is going to fall and wash off every mud that has covered your eyes there is a river that will flow as the one that came from Siloam and will be washing the eyes of people that they may see indeed now hear me the Bible says call unto me we are not done no I'm about to show you a key I just want us to pray for a minute then I'll show you a key and then we'll do the impartation call on to me and I will answer he didn't say I will tell you I will show you great and mighty things concerning your destiny concerning your business concerning your family concerning your children Lord you gave me four children who is the prophet among them who is the entrepreneur among them? Who is the leader among them? Let me not, let me not exchange their destinies like Esau and Jacob. Call on to me and I will answer. I'd like you to pray in one minute and cry. Say, Father, show me. Show me great and mighty things. Show me the things I need to be positioned over in this season. Show me things that I need to come into alignment with in this season. Someone is praying. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Oh, I tell you, I sense a very strong impartation that is about to happen. But I have to give you these three keys. Activating the gift of sight. 
what does it take to activate this blessing? Ah. Nizambika. Nizambika. Kainegaskia. Nizambika. Nizambika. Kainehaskena. Nizambika. Yesu kainehaskena. In the kabi, in the kabi, in the kabi. Listen, there are three keys I want to hand to you now. I want to show you how to activate the seeing eye. Number one, praying in the spirit. Write it down. There is nobody who invests quality, consistent time praying in the spirit who will not receive this gift of the seeing eye. Whether you misuse it or not, is another thing but as far as seeing is concerned it is a grace that goes with praying show me a man that has committed himself to the ministry of prayer I show you a seer indeed praying in the spirit and when you begin to pray the spirit of God starts to search the mind of the father and downloads for you the things that eyes have not seen the things that ears have not heard the things that have not come into the heart of any man invest time praying and see what happens to your dreams and visions invest time praying and see what happens to your creativity and intelligence and your imagination invest time praying and see what happens to you as far as the capacity to draw insight from the world. Invest time praying and you will show me, I will show you the prophetic activations that happen in your life. Hallelujah. Can I tell you? A worship minister who only sings and does not pray, when they sing, you will know the difference. You will know that this person is just singing. I don't care how nice the voice is. You will know this person is just ad leaping and just singing. There is a stability that your prayer life gives every other thing you do. A businessman who prays, the difference will be clear. A career person who prays, the difference will be clear. A man of God who studies scripture and prays, the difference will be clear. A worshiper who prays, when he sings, the difference will be clear. There are many people who raise songs and you almost feel irritated. You're like, please just finish and go. Because there is no presence. There is a sound that your prayer life gives everything that you do. You cannot fake a genuine prayer life. It's not by the huskiness of your voice. Uh -uh. There is a presence, there is a stamina, there is a confidence, a stability that comes from within your spirit. For someone, God is fanning your prayer altar. Ah, you need it. You need it. You need it. It is connected to your eyes. Your prayer altar is connected to your eyes. Your prayer altar is connected to your eyes. Yes, sir. You want to do end time ministry? Five minutes prayer? Ten minutes prayer? Save Johnny. You will reverse by yourself in shame. You want to see, 
you must learn to pray. Generate energy as you pray in the spirit. Yes, sir. Male and female, educated or otherwise, when it has to do with the gift of sight, ladies and gentlemen, it is connected to a rich, consistent discipline of the prayer ministry. There are many people it's in the place of prayer that certain melodies will come in the spirit. You will start hearing sounds. You will write them. It's in the place of prayer that certain sermons that were not even rehearsed, scriptures will come to you. It is in the place of prayer that the 10 year plan of your destiny will be downloaded. Sometimes you will pray till you fall asleep. That sleep was not slumber. It was Adam's kind of sleep because something needs to come out of you. Ladies and gentlemen, laziness in the area of prayer is a cancer that would destroy many Christians. You must obtain grace by the Spirit to be a man and a woman of consistent prayer. I'm talking of moments where you invest quality time. You are not asking, not tea, not bread. You are just traveling. It's a cruise in the Spirit. And the flesh may be weak, but you are still gaining ascendance. You will hit an escape velocity in the spirit, and the heavens are open, and you will start receiving things. Something happens to your mind, something happens to your understanding of scripture. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? Listen, if you are not filled with the Holy Ghost, with evidence of praying in fluent tongues. While I'm praying, you receive that impartation. But you see, one of the reasons why we designed our prayer department is an opportunity. There are people who have been trained, mighty anointed men and women who will administer the baptism. The baptism of the Holy Spirit is not for Pentecostals. It is not for charismatics. It is one of the manifestations of the hidden wisdom of God. He said, but we speak this wisdom among them that are mature. Not the wisdom of this world that comes to naught. Nor of the princes of this world. He calls it the hidden wisdom of God that was ordained for our glory. He said, you shall receive power. Acts 1.8. In Acts chapter 2, they receive tongues. There is a relationship between that which you utter in the spirit and the opening of your eyes and the gift of sight. Is someone learning? The generation that knows how to pray with understanding will be a seen generation indeed. Tremendous insight in ministry. Tremendous creativity by the spirit. Number two, very quickly, activating the gift of sight. What is the second key? Meditation. Meditation. Rich moments where you meditate upon the word of God and then meditate upon scripture-based resources. You can meditate upon the word of God, but you can meditate upon scripture-based resources like sermons, like materials that are word compliant. It will prime your creativity. You can be reading a leadership book and see one line. Leadership is about transforming followers to leaders and leaders to agents of change. You will stop there. The psalmist will often say, Sila, pause and think about it. Most people do not understand meditation. Meditation is not witchcraft. I'm not talking about this devilish thing that people do. To meditate means to think and to ponder using the power of imagination what is God saying there are times that I sit quietly with worship playing and I'm saying Holy Spirit breathe upon my mind what are you saying now and sometimes it will take a while before his voice comes in that silence here it comes this is what koinonia must do for the next season this is the series I want you to step into these are the anointings I'm releasing in this season when we look like we are mighty, 
it is simply because of the advantage of the power of sight the grace to see ahead of time yeah. hey, hey. Meditation. You open your scripture, you read, and you begin to meditate. Let worship play. Sanas Kabanada. Lord, what is the next thing about my life? And sometimes you need to be still. Then you will know that he is God. There is a kind of knowledge that follows stillness. Be still. And then you will know. Miracle service is next week Sunday. Part of the ways that I prepare for the miracle service is not just to pray. Sometimes I'm lying down and a dense atmosphere of worship and I'm quiet. Your majesty, speak. What do you want to do in the lives of your people? What is your emphasis for the people? Don't ever assume with God it will cost you. Always stay and say, Lord, what are you saying? Speak for your servant heareth. And sometimes he will open your eyes and give you insight into what he's doing. That there will be people who will come for that miracle service who have been tied down by spirits. And you will see it. And you will say when you get there, don't just do what you want to do. Become a voice of deliverance. Hallelujah. You believe in this? Sometimes it's in the place of meditation. I told you, that's how the song Breathe came. That's how this song, in fact, this song, I think, I hope I'm right on that. I think it came in the place of worship. Just worshiping and then these chants come in the spirit. By the spirit of the living God. And your life becomes a sign and a wonder. First to you and then everyone around you. Ladies and gentlemen, practice meditation. Sometimes as a businessman, shut everything around you and sit down. There has to be a way out. Spirit of the living God, what is the next five years going to look like? What is the next 10 years in this industry going to look like? Ah, then the one who gives you the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches of secret places, he comes to you in that stillness. <laughs> He breathes upon you and reveals to you the next 10 years, reveals to you the next 20 years. There were many things that we had the opportunity to do as a ministry, but every time I went to the Lord, he would just be silent over it or he will say it's not yet time. And I said, that's it. This is your ministry. This is your vision. No matter how uncommon and unusual it is, if you say it is not time, it is not time. Someone called me one time and said, Apostle, do you have an idea of people who have been writing books in your names? Books that have almost sold five-star ratings across several platforms. I said, that is wrong. So why don't you just quickly write? And I go to him, your majesty. No, it is not your time. The foolishness of seeing will make you a champion mysteriously so you will do things that are unusual but with them will come power and transgenerational impact hallelujah praise the name of the lord this is how god has helped us as a ministry this is how god has helped many who have learned sensitivity please write it meditation meditation you can get sometimes word-based confessions sometimes you can get scriptures on tape designated scriptures are, are along certain areas and just allow them play sometimes it's worship like the strings playing like this and you're just soaking in that glory when the glory comes there'll be no words to say oh, oh, oh.
When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, sing it one time. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Listen, my dear people, let me teach you a secret. Every time you are granted the opportunity to go and minister, don't just stand up and write songs blindly and go and stand and start singing. It's in that secret place. The Spirit of God can arrange songs, songs that you have forgotten. This song connects to this. This one connects to this. When you now have the opportunity to minister, you will come up with a, an arrangement that will so impact the spirit of the listeners. How did you join this song with this one? It came in the place of meditation. In the stillness when you stay with the spirit, destinies are altered. You will hear sounds in the spirit. God will tell you this plus this is what equals this. As a businessman, whilst you stay meditating, here he comes. This is the next phase of what the world is doing. Go ahead of them by doing this one and doing that one. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When the glory comes, when the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. The third and final way you activate the gift of sight is through impartation. And that's what you are about to receive. Yes, sir. It is a grace that can be imparted. Ephesians 3, 9. When the glory comes, there will be no words to say. Oh, oh, oh. When the glory comes, there'll be no words to say. I want you to please read aloud the first six words that you see. Count them in your mind before you read. The first six words. Are you ready? One to read, please. And to make all men see. One more time. One more time. There is a grace that can make not some men, all men see. All men can see depending on the grace that rests on them. All men may not see visions, but all men can have dreams. Many can have visions. All men can have access to supernatural insight of scripture. All men can have insight to creativity and intelligence at an extraordinary scale. And all men can have access to prophetic activations. The word of knowledge seen in the spirit. Extraordinary supernatural experiences. This is the heritage of the saints. And within the next two to five minutes, as instructed by the Spirit of God, I want to impart this grace. I told you there is a gift that God wants to give someone. To make all men see. To make all men see their future. To make all men see what God is saying. To make all men see his program. To make all men see where their wealth is. Just because everybody is running there. 
you may run there and your wealth is not there to make all men see what business to do to make all men see what dimension of ministry you have been called into to make all men see where your helpers are Esther to make all men see where Ahasuerus is Naomi to make all men see where Boaz is to see where your victory is I want to pray for you from the depth of my heart I'm not wasting your time your life will change remarkably believe me remarkably can I tell you the gift of sight will also let you see where the problem is it can show you where the problem is this backwardness in this family where is it what is the root of this tragedy that has tied down men tied down women tied down great people it is not only to see the future you can see the origin of tragedies and to correct them who seen that this man was born blind himself or his father and Jesus said neither and those who are following online you are about to receive something miraculous and marvelous miraculous and marvelous the gift of sight the seeing eyes he said blessed are your eyes for the see and your ears for the hear
Number two, I want to pray for you. Your imagination, your creativity, after the order of Bezalel, after the order of Uzziah, in the name of Jesus, extraordinary ideas, extraordinary concepts, Parakatoska Brekataba, begin to see them now. Begin to see them now. The ideas connected to your wealth, begin to see them now. What's that song? Another measure. Sing it for me. Shalega paradadadada. Another measure. Another measure. Upon your life, upon your ministry. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I impart that grace upon you in the name of Jesus. in the name of Jesus what you have never seen in scripture I open your eyes to begin to see it I open the eyes of your understanding unusual insights into scripture receive it in the name of Jesus Hallelujah. Now hear me. There are many of you at this point in your Christian experience. You are in desperate need of the revelatory gifts of the spirit to be activated the word of knowledge the word of wisdom the gift of prophecy i decree and declare anyone here who is desperate for these gifts of the spirit and it has not rested upon you or it has rested upon you at a level that can no longer host the burden and the responsibilities upon you i stretch my hands receive a fresh impartation now a fresh impartation now a fresh impartation now Adonai you have entered because of spiritual blindness every mistake you have made some of you are in financial troubles now because of the bankruptcy of sight some of you may be in marital crisis right now some of you may be in ministerial troubles right now in the name of Jesus I invoke the mercy of God come out of that situation now Come out of that situation now. 
a miracle service is next week but please allow me to speak over your finances there is something your eyes needs to see i want to pray for you can i tell you this listen your wealth is not everywhere don't make a mistake of just copying and joining the bandwagon you will get into trouble until you deplete yourself just because it's working for others does not mean it will work for you you have to see what the Lord is saying concerning you I'm about to pray for you some of you will see it in dreams some of you will see it in visions some of you will have prophetic confirmations but I stand by prophecy wherever your financial resources will come from I gravitate you towards that area I gravitate you towards that area I gravitate you towards that area in the name of Jesus Christ everybody here who is a leader or you are in ministry in the name of Jesus I'm praying for you the eyes to see beyond just a 2020 vision let it be imparted upon you I'm praying for you from the depth of my heart. May nothing take you unawares again. I say it again. May nothing take you unawares. That before it happens, by the power of sight, may you see it. So that if you have to stop it, you stop it from happening. And if you have to allow it, then you allow it happen. Hear me? By the gift of sight, you will never enter any vehicle that will kill you. Let me repeat it again. You will never enter any vehicle that will kill you. Let me give you a disclaimer. Many of you will go to sleep and you will wake up from this encounter with many visions listen never execute anything you see until you verify it with the word i need to give you this disclaimer no matter how accurate what you have seen is when you get up do not execute until you can support that vision with scripture and where possible seek godly counsel I'm saying this to you because there are many people an impartation like this is very risky because when your eyes are open you will see all kinds of things and Satan can appear as an angel of light are we together yeah the devil can appear as an angel of light and want to manipulate the sincerity of your passion to see and you may see things or God can give you correct visions and here comes Satan with wrong interpretations of it and you will carry a wrong interpretation and connect it to a correct vision and it will end up misleading you and misleading others no matter what I see I have to confirm it with scripture and where it is beyond my spiritual level to interpret I will consult with those who have gone ahead of me and open up my heart and say I've seen something like this sir what do you see what can you say about it and sometimes they will say don't worry give me a few days let me pray about it ah this is what you saw this is what you saw never be too big to be guided no matter how accurate you are we see in part I forgot to tell you that that even after you have received the grace to see you will see in part that means the word of God that is wholesome and complete and entire must vet your visions must vet your dreams must vet your creativity must vet your prophetic experiences that way go and listen to my message the value of encounters there is the prophetic dimension of the word that immunes you and stops you from getting into error many people prayed their way to visions but because they did not honor scripture 
they started seeing things that misled them some of you have seen people like that they start acting as if they are having a mental condition it was prayer that took them there and they did not have respect for scripture they now that you see them misbehaving they start talking to themselves they will not take their bath for days they will start looking as if they are mad people eventually they will get them on admission in the hospital i have to tell you as a responsible man of god that when you are open to the vistas of the spirit it is a very vast realm what gives you stability is your respect for scripture otherwise your eyes will see a lot of things the devil will manipulate you to sleep and see someone carrying the form of your mother lifting a knife and you will get up and say ah so my mother is the person behind this and satan has succeeded in cheating you he took advantage of the opening of your eyes as an, an an innocent woman who loved you and nurtured you you will begin to hate her this is the number one problem with the prophetic ministry their inability to save their experiences and vet it from the lens of scripture there are many people today who are called witches and wizards there are many sincere family members that have come at loggerheads because some apostle or some prophet said this one is this i believe that there is witchcraft but there are many people an innocent husband and a wife and suddenly they make the wife hate her husband i see that this guy wants to destroy you interpreting visions has a protocol there's no time for that now but you need to learn to see your visions there are many things you will see that are not necessary you dump them and focus on that which is consistent everything you see does not have to be interpreted when you are mining gold you will fetch sand a lot of other things will come push them away you are looking for gold hallelujah i'm saying this so that you don't create another kind of error and for someone who is watching I have to bring this balance as we wrap up. Everything you see, no matter how sure you think you see or saw, make sure that you open up in scripture. And if it is a revelation that would demand you taking destiny steps, seek godly counsel. By the privilege of God's grace, we are here to help. Don't stand up and suddenly say, you know what? I had a vision. And in that vision, the Lord said, I should leave my job as a breadwinner of 10 the one who takes care of 10 people before you take that step seek godly counsel there are people that god has washed their eyes with eyes self they can see and say this is not what it means be careful do not take a wrong step and destroy your spouse and destroy your husband and destroy your children and destroy your parents i'm saying this as we close because there have been people, I can tell you through the years, I've been involved with people who because of the, the depth of their prayer life, meditation, word study, their eyes became open. Some of those people will get up in the night and start trekking no shoes to the river and tell them a spirit, someone appeared. I know one gentleman, he's now late, long dead. The guy used to go through story by 4, 8, 4 p.m. He would enter one building they used to use as an auditorium he would sit down there because he said there was an angel some feminine angel that used to come to him that they would sing together she takes him out in the spirit and takes him to various places around nigeria this guy started isolating himself from people he started behaving like somebody who was having a medical condition i mean what i'm saying he got into depression because he was like nobody else was his friend. He claimed they used to sing together with that bean. I remember interviewing the guy and I said, describe for me the bean. Once he started doing that, I said, you are, you are meeting with a familiar spirit. Oh, but she tells me good things. Behave yourself, respect parents. I said, you don't know Satan. That gentleman today has passed on to glory years ago. It is true. So I'm saying this so that believers don't blindly go and start writing everything and executing them verbatim. What was written was written so that it will not be changed. Your visions can be altered. I taught you here that it is written is greater than I saw. It is written is greater than I heard. If you can respect the word of God, 
then your seeing becomes profitable. It is not everything I've seen that is from God. It is not everything I've seen as a man of God that is worth executing. When I pass them through the lens of God's word, I find some of them wanting and I just hang them there until I grow higher to vet them again or until I dump them because I do not believe in them. You must have the maturity to respect the word of God and no matter how accurate your insights are, let them pass through the sieve of the word and then you have created a safety net for your excelling. Please rise up on your feet. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me make the altar call now, and then I speak over our lives finally. Let me also remind you that next week is our miracle service for the month of October. Please make sure you invite everyone to come and partake of this wave of revival that God is birthing from this place across the nations. You are in this place, and on hearing me speak, the Holy Ghost began to speak to you that you need to make your ways right. There's no need cajoling you. I believe that by now, you have your eyes have been opened to see your state that you need Jesus. You need to rededicate your life to Jesus, or you need to make a first-time decision wherever you are. Let me give you two minutes of our time. Please leave your seat honorably and come and stand right before me. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them. Somebody is having the boldness to come before Jesus. God has opened their eyes to see that they need Jesus. This is not all of them. Let's celebrate them as they come. 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 Leave your seat and come. Come join them. Jesus is calling you to give you a new beginning, a new start, to help you, to lift you. When you come to Jesus, you have sinned correctly indeed because he's the way, he's the truth, he's the life. The Bible says no man comes to the Father except through him. Those coming, please come quickly. All the overflows, make sure you move to your LED screens and those following from across the globe, here is your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for making this noble decision. You're joining them, join them quickly. I want to lead you to pray this prayer. Everyone who is in Christ must have prayed this prayer in some way. And it's an honor to lead you to make this prayer. It's the confession of your faith, your sin, and receiving the life of God. Please lift your right hand high above your head and say this after me, Lord Jesus. Tonight, I have heard your word. I believe that you are the son of God. Come. I believe that you died for my sin. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive your life into my heart. I decree that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight and forever, I'm a child of God. I just saw light coming on one of you. I just saw like power just come on you and to destroy every satanic thing. I will finish my prayer, but I rebuke that spirit. Now, release them. In the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, be set free now. In the name of Jesus. Say after me, I'm a child of God. From today and forever, I go forward ever and backward never. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones. In the name that is above all names, I thank you because according to their profession of faith, their sins are hereby forgiven. And in Jesus' name, we call them bona fide recipients of your life. The power to live a victorious Christian life, we release upon you. And we declare in the name of Jesus that you will serve the Lord all the days of your life. You will go forward ever and backward never. For in Jesus' name we pray. 
Amen and amen. Please do well to follow our counselors there by my right, waving the placard. That will be your left. Please follow them and you have a word with them very quickly and then return to your seat. God bless you. Let's honor them as they go. Hallelujah. Now, just a very important announcement. The protocol and logistics department, all our gentlemen that you see on suit here, the department is open for new members. For all of you who have been wanting to serve in the house of the Lord, especially in capacity uh, of the protocol and logistics, please you can go to the PR desk just after this auditorium. And for those outside, you may need to come in and there will be a form for you to fill and then they will guide you on what to do. So the doors are open. When it's closed, I will announce it. But for now, the doors are open. Please do well. Take advantage of it. For some of you, you've been searching for a way to serve in the house of the Lord. Here is one department that is open for you. And make sure that you are part of them. For one last time, for all those who need to be registered for the program that will be coming in two or three weeks, number one, awaiting couple, those who are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Um, there is a, a desk for you to register at the medical stand. It's, 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 it's a strict, it's a restricted program so that we allow these professionals who are coming to be able to speak to you. And then all those who are medical practitioners and who want to be part of the training is free, completely free. You go and also register. And then we have a quota that we do not want to exceed so that we don't stretch the facilitators who are coming. So you have perhaps this week and next week as the final chance. You can reach after the service. Just ask the medical people. They'll give you, um, uh, you know, they will tell you a way to be able to fill it. And for those who are outside of Abuja, we're sorry, we're not doing it online. It's localized, so it's going to be limited for those here, and we're not airing it because it's a very private program. Um, and so we really apologize. We'll only work with those who are on site, and then once we exceed the quota that we've allowed, we may not be able to do more than that. So um, avail yourself while the opportunity is there, and by God's grace, the last and final announcement, hopefully together with the bill, would be up if necessary. If it's not necessary to make a bill for it, then we'll just let it be. Hallelujah. Have you been blessed tonight? Please take our time to listen to this message again after the service. Listen again in the course of the week. You will hear something when you listen that you did not hear now. I pray for you in Jesus' name. You will take advantage of this seeing eye. And in Jesus' name, you will make progress in destiny. You will make progress in life. I prophesy upon you that this week beginning, let it be a week of favor. Let it be a week of breakthrough. Let doors be opened. Return on Sunday with testimonies. It will be clear from your life that God helps men. It will be clear from your life that God lifts men. It will be clear from your life that it pays to serve Jesus. The Lord bless you and honor you let's share the grace together in fellowship the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and mercies follow us all the days of our lives as we dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen god bless you see you at the miracle service I, 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 I. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Ay, 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 ay. Glory be to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah.